Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, the DN What If, with another fanfiction. This is the second part of What If Deku Rescued Three Lost Souls. All credits for this video go to their respective authors. So please support the real author. Check out the link in the description for more details. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. After recovering in the hospital Izuku was excited to get back home and explain to the others what happened. Tim and Todoroki were finishing up with packing their things when Izuku got a phone call. He was confused seeing it was Taoya but answered and put it on speaker for Shouto. Taoya, is everything okay? That got Shouto's attention who walked over and sat on the bed next to Izuku. Not exactly, Shouto's with you right. Taoya sounded worried and panicked. I'm here, Shouto answered, sounding just as worried now. Thought I don't know how to explain this but dot 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 me and Himiko have to leave dot not forever obviously but, for now. Both of the teenagers were shocked into silence. Was dot was it something I did? Izuku asked worriedly. He didn't think he did anything wrong, but he could be wrong. No, no no no, neither of you did anything wrong, we just dot 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 will be back, promise, keep each other safe okay. I love you both. Taoya hung up, not giving either room to argue with him. Do dot what? Shouto looked at the phone confused. He stood up and paused for a second are we dot do you know what he means? Izuku put his phone away and pulled his legs to his chest. No dot 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 he hasn't talked like that since dot then. I'm not sure where they're going. I trust him though. He stood up and pulled the other into a hug. Feeling Shouto relax against him they'll be fine. Let's finish packing and head back okay. Shouto nodded hugging the other back before letting go and calming down. Okay, I trust you. Izuku smiled before turning back and picking up his back. You shouldn't. He whispered so only he could hear it. You three fought the hero killer and won. That's crazy. Kaminari shouted as the rest of the class agreed. Yeah, you three seem different now though. Yuraka pointed out. Izuku smiled. Maybe. The class went back to talking about their own internships and the hero killer. You gotta admit, the guy had some pretty strong ideals and was kinda cool. Kaminari. Siro yelled as Gyro hit the blonde on the head. He yelped and looked at the three. Sorry guys. Ada shook his head. It's quite alright Kaminari. I do see why some people would agree with him and find him cool, but he went about it the wrong way. Izuku noticed something wrong. It wasn't just the fact that Taoya and Himiko had left, or the fact that Aizawa had avoided the subject any time Yuri or Kauta brought it up. It was the fact that Katsuki hadn't talked to him or texted or anything since they all got back. He tried to ignore it though as Aizawa began speaking. Now that your internships are over and you're healed from your eventful week, he gave a look to the three that still had some bandages you don't get to rest. You all need to get ready for your final exams, I also have something to announce, you'll be getting a new student. That made the class jump into chaos. Izuku's head perked up, he didn't expect someone to come into class already halfway through the year. You can come in. Izuku's eyes widened as no one other than Shinsu walked in this is Shinsu Hitoshi. He showed skill in the sports festival and proved he was more than worthy of being in this class while you were all at internships. Go take a seat in the back. He nodded his head and walked to the back of the class. Izuku waved when he walked by making the other smile now, today will be. It was finally lunch time when Katsuki spoke to Izuku, kind of. Isahat, Zuchin, I'll beat you. He glared at both of them before walking out the door with the back of squad following. Izuku narrowed his eyes. Why was Katsuki mad at him? He seems friendly. He jumped and turned to Shinsu. Sorry, didn't mean to sneak up on you. Izuku calmed down and smiled. It's fine, just zoned out a little. I'm glad you were able to join our class like you wanted. Shinsu blushed and rubbed the back of his neck. Same here. Soon Yuraka, Todoroki, Ida, Momo, and Su joined them. You want to join us for lunch? We can tell you about the class. Yuraka offered excitedly. Unger. They all walked to the lunchroom talking about what they thought the exam would be and what they did during their internships. They were all sitting at the table with Izuku at the end so he could still have his wings out when he jumped and yelped before turning to whoever just stabbed one of the small injuries on his wings. The whole table turned in slight shock and anger to only see Matoma with a smirk. Oh my bad, I didn't know the hero course big brother was weak. Izuku looked down slightly while the others looked ready to kill him. What do you want? Shinsu asked in a cold tone, though Izuku knew he wasn't using his quirk. Before he could speak though a girl came up and knocked him out before making sure he didn't fall. Sorry about him, but I heard you guys talking about the exam. An upperclassman told me they fought robots like in the entrance exam, so I think it's that. Thank you for telling us and getting him. Ida yelled as she walked away. Izuku settled down more and made his wings disappear since he didn't want to repeat even though no one else would have done that. If it's robots that should be easy, Yuraka declared, though something about it didn't feel right. I don't think so. Our year's been more eventful than others so they may have changed it. Some of the others agreed. I hope not. I can deal with robots. Kaminari commented leaning over the small wall that separated them. The group laughed before falling back into conversation. 
When the end of school hit, Izuku figured then would be the best time to try and talk to Katsuki. So when everyone else had left it gave him a chance to approach the blonde. Kakin, are you mad at me? He asked. The two weren't facing each other since Katsuki refused to turn around. Am I mad at you? That's what you fucking ask. Katsuki whipped around and Izuku was shocked to see the other have tears in his eyes. You almost fucking died because you decided their lives and well-being were worth more than your life. So yeah I'm fucking mad. Izuku jumped a little and reached a hand out. Kakunai Katsuki hid his hand away. No, you don't get to fucking talk to me. You almost fucking died saving someone else and didn't think for a goddamn second about yourself. So until you realize why I'm fucking pissed off don't talk to me. Katsuki pushed past him. Izuku couldn't move, it felt like he was stuck standing there looking at nothing. He didn't even notice he was crying until he rushed out of the classroom into his own and locked the door. He sat in the middle of his room trying to breathe as his own sobs shook his body. He was choking on his own voice as he tried to calm down. Izuku, can you hear me? He jumped a little and looked up seeing the big three in front of him. He nodded his head. Can you follow my breathing? Tamaki asked, placing one of Izuku's hands on his chest and taking exaggerated breaths. Izuku followed along and calmed down, finally able to breathe. What happened Green Bean? Nejiri asked, petting his head. Titaoya and Himiko, they dot they left. I almost lost Tenya and Shouto dot if I was any slower th they could be dead. Kakan's angry at me beauty. I don't know why. The three pulled him into a hug trying to calm him down as he fell into another fit of sobs. Aizawa was walking to the meeting quickly. He wished he could comfort Izuku after hearing the two argue, but Aizawa agreed with Katsuki Izuku needed to learn. We're putting Bakugu and Izuku together against All Might. After the two's fight, it had been a little awkward in the class with all the tension, though the others tried to ignore it since the other two didn't want to seem to acknowledge it. So how do you guys think you'll do on the written exam? Shinsu asked. He was still trying to get to know the Izuku as they declared themselves. I'll try my best, but I should probably still study. Iraraka rubbed the back of her neck with a small blush. I agree. We should all try our hardest. Ida declared waving his arms. Maybe we could do a study session together. Kiro, Tsu suggested. I would love to join, but I believe the others need more help. Momo explained pointing to Kaminari and Mina who looked like they were panicking. Uh, how kind of you yay Yurazu. Thank you Ida. I'll see if I can join the study group. Todoroki said. Great. Where should we hold it? Ida asked, already seeming to be planning it. Oh, oh, there's this really nice cafe nearby. We could study there. Yuraka suggested showing the place. Perfect. How about we go there after school today? Of course after you all change into more comfortable clothes. Ada suggested. Sure, sounds good. I wouldn't mind, Kiro. Yeah I'll ask my sister. Izuku shook his head since he had zoned out a little. Yeah, sounds good. How about Don an hour after school lets out? The group nodded and began planning. Izuku was in his room looking over his notes and books while changing when someone knocked on the door. He clipped the last part of the leather jacket around his wings before going over and opening it. Is everything okay? Izuku asked, seeing All Might looking a little anxious. Yes of course. There just seems to be dot 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 be a teacher's meeting and I cannot bring these two. Izuku could tell the man was lying but ignored it. Sure I can watch them. Good luck at dot 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 the teacher's meeting. He smirked seeing the other becoming more anxious. All right. Thank you. No problem Uncle Yagi. That seemed to throw him off even more as Izuku let the two in and closed the door. Nai-san. Izuku. The two yelled tackling him into a hug. Hi you two. He hugged them back before realizing something I'm gonna go to a cafe and study with some of my friends. Do you wanna come? He asked the two crouching down to their level. We get to meet more of your friends. Uri asked excitedly. I don't see the big deal. Izuku's the best anyway. How to side out. Though Izuku could see the excitement. I'll take that as a yes. Let me make sure it's okay first. Study group. Midoriya Izuku. Hey, is it okay if I bring my little brother and sister with me? Ida Tenya, of course. Shinsu Itoshi, sounds good to me. Uraraka Achako. Oh I get to see them again. They were so cute. Midoriya Izuku. Wait, when did you see them? Suyu Asui, during the sports festival Kiro, they were looking for you. Shinsu Itoshi, did you really need to type out Kiro? Suyu Asui, yes I did. Fight me. Shinsu Itoshi, no thanks I choose life. Todoroki Shouto, I wouldn't mind. Uraraka Achako. Also Ida, I'm putting nicknames greater than, this is boring. Ida Tenya, Uraraka. Please, this is supposed to be professional. Uraraka Achako changed her name to Isek Newton. Uraraka Achako changed Midoriya Izuku's name to an angel. Uraraka Achako changed Suyu Asui's name to Kermit. Uraraka Achako changed Todoroki Shouto's name to Katy Perry. Uraraka Achako changed Ida Tenya's name to Sanic. Uraraka Achako changed Shinsu Hitoshi's name to Gucci Ibex. Sanic, dot 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 why? Isak Newton, you fast boy dot he fast boy. An angel, like my hero name. Gucci Ibex, sure is a coup. 
It wasn't long before Izuku had gotten the other two dressed. He was wearing a red shirt, black leather jacket, and black jeans. Iri was wearing a light blue shirt and a white skirt. And Kauta was wearing a dark blue shirt with lighter blue shorts and his hat. Izuku grabbed his satchel that had his notebooks, textbooks, and a few things for Iri and Kauta to play with while they studied. Luckily the cafe wasn't too far away so they could get away with walking there and still make it on time. He was carrying both of them so they didn't get lost since it was pretty busy with school out and workers leaving and going to work. Izuku, he looked down to Kauta and back ahead showing he was listening are your friends nice? He was a little shocked at the question. Yeah, they are, you've met two of them, remember Shouto and Hitoshi? The two nodded their heads. Yeah, Shouto is Taoya's little brother, and Hitoshi is the tired one. Iri declared with a large smile. Izuku laughed a little. Yeah, them, the other three are friends I made in the first week, don't worry. They're all very nice, but one's loud. Izuku joked, getting a small laugh out of the two. They finally made it to the cafe and walked in. Luckily it was a small one so no one was in there besides the two workers and... Ah, uh, Izuku, good to see you made it. These must be your siblings. Iri smiled and waved while Kauta glared. Yeah, this is Iri and this is Kauta. He set the two down on his chair before unzipping his bag and taking out his notebooks and books like Ida had or the others here yet. Just as he said that Yuraka and Sue walked in. Izuku, Ida, Yuraka waved them down as the two of them walked over to the table high. You're Izuku's siblings right. And Yuraka, and this is Tsu. The other girl waved. Iri jumped up and greeted them while Kauta stood a little off to the side and watched them. Todoroki and Shinsu should be arriving shortly then. Once everyone arrived and set their stuff up it was pretty peaceful. The group would ask random questions every now and again or ask someone to go over their work to make sure it was right. Though that piece was a little disturbed when Iri tugged on it his shirt. He looked down to her a little surprised. What's that? She asked, pointing to an equation. Ah, uh, this equation allows me to solve this. He explained pointing to another part of his book. It soon turned into him and the others explaining parts of their school work to Iri and eventually Kauta who loosened up a little. They seemed to be enjoying themselves. Shinsu pointed out looking at them all talking. Izuku smiled softly. Yeah, I'm glad. Shinsu stared at him for a moment. You have a nice smile. Izuku blinked for a second before smiling at Shinsu. Thanks. That seemed to catch the other boy off guard a little but he nodded. Uno problem dot can you help me with this? Izuku leaned over and saw what he was talking about. Sure, first you need to. It turned into a pretty successful study session. It was the day of the exams. Everyone was standing outside a building holding their cases with the teachers in front of them. This is gonna be a piece of cake. Kaminari yelled while jumping up and down. Izuku just smiled at them, but he could tell something was gonna happen. I assume you all know why you're here. Aizawa asked with crossed arms. Izuku could see Nenzu hiding in his capture weapon though. To fight robots. Mina and Kaminari shouted at the same time. Nope. Nenzu declared popping out of the teacher's gear, making some of the students jump. What? As you all know, this year has been different than others, so this test will be different. Now most of the students were nervous this year. You'll be fighting us. After explaining everything, and that Shinsu would be taking a different test they started pairing up students and teachers. Izuku was a little surprised at a few, but understood what they were going for. And finally, Midoriya and Bakugu versus All Might. Izuku's eyes widened and he looked at the blonde who still looked pissed at him. He quickly looked away and back to the front to see All Might smiling. Most of the groups went to plan for their upcoming turn. Or were watching the team at the moment fight. Yuraka, Ayama, Takoyami, Tsu, Shinsu, and Izuku were all in the observation area watching the teams. Surprised you aren't planning with Bakugu. Shinsu nudged Izuku who jumped a little before looking down. He's angry at me right now. I'm not sure how well we'll do. I'm sure you'll do great Izuku. You're both great fighters. Maybe you both just need a little push. Izuku smiled at the girl. Yeah, maybe. They were gonna need more than a push. Even when they were called to stand at the gates they didn't say anything to each other. And if they looked at each other Katsuki would glare while Izuku would jump and look down again. Bakugu and Midoriya. Please enter. Katsuki started walking with Izuku following a little behind. We're supposed to work together on this. If we even want a chance of winning, then we need to talk. Izuku thought as he jogged a little closer to Katsuki. K. Kaken. For this exam where the heroes and the teachers are the villains, we need to keep in mind the villain's ability and power and decide whether we should fight or run. But All Might's the villain and fighting against him is dangerous. Izuku saw Katsuki clenching his jaw and trying to pick up the pace it's a bad idea anyway. He started going faster Kaken wait. Stop fucking following me. Izuku stopped for a second before going back to follow after him. If we keep going straight All Might will be waiting for us. We need to take a detour. Why should we run away? It would be better if we beat him up. Izuku glared a little. We should avoid combat if we can. Why? You never do. We'll toy with him and once he's tired out I'll beat him. Izuku stopped again. Now he was getting annoyed. 
He wasn't sure what was running through Katsuki's head anymore. Who do you think All Might is? He ran to catch back up with the other even with the handicap you can't win against him. Katsuki began to turn but Izuku felt like he should dodge. He ducked and flipped back as the gauntlet almost hit him. He looked at Katsuki shocked. The other seemed just as shocked before covering it with a glare. Don't say another word. It's pissing me off. Izuku had been too shocked to notice All Might at the other end of the area. They both noticed too late though as a large cloud of dust and debris came flying at them. It had caused a lot of destruction in the city. Luckily Izuku had summoned his wings in time and surrounded himself and Katsuki so they weren't injured, though that seemed to make the blonde angrier as he shoved Izuku away once it was over. Who gives a damn about damaging the city? Both stood up slowly. Katsuki seemed excited while Izuku glared and slowly got lowered to the ground. All Might sent another shock wave. Though smaller if you think of this as an exam you'll be sorry, didn't need to tell Izuku twice. He already felt like he was in battle again I am a villain, heroes. Izuku's head flashed back to Sensei making him take a small step back before he reminded himself he wasn't there and this was All Might. We can't take him head on. Izuku got rid of his wings and was ready to run. Though Katsuki didn't seem to agree. Don't tell me what to do. All Might pushed off the ground, heading right towards them stun grenade. All Might was blinded for a moment come at you. I would've even if you didn't tell me. Katsuki leapt forward, though All Might caught his head. He set off a barrage of smaller explosions and Izuku could hear All Might saying oh over and over again. He grabbed Katsuki's arm before slamming him into the ground. Izuku growled and charged at All Might before aiming a kick to the teacher's head. All Might quickly dodged and went behind Izuku. To a normal person it looked like he had teleported, but Izuku could still track him with his eyes. He spun around to face All Might who was still smiling. You're not off the hook either young Midoriya. Izuku glared getting closer to Katsuki who was still down you thought about leaving your teammate and running. Izuku's head messed with him more, still showing images of all for one in his head. He jumped up and out of the way, he turned feeling someone behind him. He twisted and grappled onto Katsuki's shoulders before going to the ground and sliding slightly. That wasn't the right move apparently as Katsuki seemed even more angry. They both stood back up. Kakan we move. Izuku glared as Katsuki walked forward. Kakan, I told you, we can't win facing him head on. Katsuki pushed past him again. Shut up, I'll win. Izuku's eyes narrowed. He didn't get why he wanted to win so badly. I brought something for the one wanting to run. They both looked up and saw All Might kicking down a piece of railing at Izuku. He wasn't able to dodge though as it was pushed down on him, crushing his back and trapping him to the ground. He then punched Katsuki sending him back into the ground. Kakan, Izuku shouted. He felt his body heating up with small flames appearing. As All Might walked closer the heat grew stronger and the bars began to melt around him. Katsuki finally stood back up. He wasn't focused enough to hear what they were saying. But as soon as All Might clenched his fist Izuku growled and melted the bars before summoning his wings and flying as fast as possible before twisting and tackling Katsuki out of the way. What the hell are you thinking? Katsuki slid a little before Izuku picked him up and flew out and into an alleyway. Bastard, put me down. Shut up. I said put me down. This time the gauntlet did hit Izuku into a wall. Izuku got rid of his wings and leaned against the wall with Katsuki opposite of him. I can't think of a way to beat All Might, or an escape. Katsuki was silent as he spoke so don't just stand around and let him attack you. He saw Katsuki clenching his fist and jaw again. Shut up. He let off an explosion as he punched the wall next to Izuku's head, who hadn't moved an inch. Kakan. Izuku spoke softly. I'm not gonna say it again Zuchin. Izuku's eyes widened. Katsuki hadn't called him that since they last fought with his speed, we aren't going to avoid him to escape. We can't fight him either. Shut up. He won't budge with any half-assed power. Izuku already knew that but I'm not putting you in harm's way. That surprised Izuku even more so here's the plan. Izuku was on top of a roof looking over the path of destruction. If everything went right, then this should be easy. He saw All Might across the way looking at him, but he didn't make it obvious that Izuku noticed him. Izuku flew up into the sky and saw All Might jump to hit him down. He smirked before making his wings go away and falling. He saw All Might look shocked and changed so he could catch Izuku. Sorry All Might, but that's not happening. He lit his arm on fire and aimed a punch to the ground. That's when the hero noticed it was wet with something. As soon as his hit landed a large circle exploded. None of it hit Izuku, but all of it hit All Might. The hero blocked it but heard a click behind him. Not gonna work. Katsuki pulled the pin on the gauntlet forcing All Might more towards the explosion. Kakan. Izuku flew up and grabbed the other teen before flying them close to the ground. They both began flying to the exit. It won't hold him long Zuchin. Izuku hummed as they both picked up the pace. Izuku saw All Might finally coming toward them, he was going after Katsuki first. Izuku grabbed the blonde's arm and aimed the other gauntlet at the hero sending him back again. Izuku stopped and stood on the ground before punching the ground and causing it to crack and send waves of fire. Katsuki stopped next to him. 
They both nodded to each other and took off in opposite directions. All Might had lost them again, but he needed to keep his guard up. If he let them pull off the same thing again then they might win. He heard one of their footsteps and turned to see Katsuki ready to let off another large explosion. He didn't give him the chance though and quickly destroyed the gauntlet before pushing the teen to the ground. That made him let his guard down though. Izuku watched the scene before flying out and tackling the hero to the ground. He activated the metal wings and held one of the blades to All Might's neck while Katsuki ran over with the cuffs. Bakugou and Midoriya win. The two were now in the infirmary covered in bandages. It had been silent for a while with the two not looking at each other. I'm sorry, Katsuki looked shocked as Izuku spoke for. Worrying you dot when you yelled at me I didn't get it. Beauty you lost your best friend for almost 10 years. And then when you get him back as an idiot and doesn't care what happens to him. Izuku laughed a little at the end but when All Might dot when he kept hurting you. I felt like I couldn't do anything to protect Wanda Izuku trailed off with tears rolling down his face. Such an Ikatsuki cut himself off. He stood up and walked to the other bed before pulling Izuku into a hug thanks. Izuku was frozen for a minute before he hugged the other back and buried his face in the other's chest. It was silent for a minute as they just held each other until Katsuki spoke up again. I shouldn't have yelled at you or tried to hit you. Izuku laughed a little. I kinda deserve it. Izuku was laying in his bed taking a nap. He hadn't slept much when him and Katsuki were fighting. But now that they were better he was feeling better. He had music playing from his phone on his bed quietly as he slowly drifted to sleep. Zuku, Izuku. He bolted up and turned to face the person, or people rather. He blinked a few times before realizing it was Shouto and Shinsu. He sat up more and stretched. What are you two doing here? Did you forget the class was going to the mall today? Shinsu asked with a smirk. Izuku's eyes widened and he stood up. Crap I forgot, sorry. It's fine, the others are waiting for us. Bakugu said you might be asleep so we came early. Shouto explained, shrugging his shoulders. Izuku nodded and picked up his jacket. Right, sorry let's go. They walked out of the room when Izuku realized something weren't you visiting your mom today Shouto. HM, though, she said it would be better to hang out with friends, I'll visit her tomorrow. He rubbed the back of his neck a little awkwardly. That's good, Miss Ray is really nice. Once they made it to the mall they all talked for a minute before deciding to split into groups for the shopping. Oh, oh, can we go with our usual groups? Uraraka asked while jumping up and down. I don't see the issue. Momo shrugged with Ida nodding along. Of course, everyone to your groups. Izuku wasn't really surprised when his group consisted of Uraraka, Ida, Su, Shouto, and Shinsu. So where do we need to go first? Su asked the group. Izuku wasn't really sure. He had never been camping before. I don't know. I've never been camping. He admitted. I haven't either. What's camping? Shinsu and Shouto added, looking just as confused. The other three looked shocked at them. Really? We must show you the way. We'll explain it, Kiro. With that the one group split up into pairs, Shinsu with Tsu, Ada with Shouto, and Yuraka with Izuku. Ada said something about it making it easy to explain it. We shall all meet back up at the food court in an hour, Ada said before dragging Shouto away from the group. Tsu and Shinsu went to a different store leaving Yuraka and Izuku. So Dot what's camping? Well Dot you go out into the wilderness and spend a few nights there. It's a lot more fun than it sounds. She waved her hand dismissively. He laughed a little. Okay, so what do we need first? After almost 30 minutes of picking up stuff like bug spray and a few toiletries they took a small break. I'll be right back Izuku, I gotta run to the bathroom. Izuku nodded and sat by the fountain scrolling on his phone. It's been a while as if he felt a hand around his neck and flinched slightly. He knew it was Shigaraki right away, but his voice sounded different. He turned and saw his eyes were slightly darker than normal. Tenko, the hand around his neck moved and he let out a sigh. The hand rested on his arm slightly, keeping a finger off the skin. Izu, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Tenko whispered. Izuku smiled and laughed a little. I'm fine, are you okay? Tenko nodded his head what are you doing here? He saw Tenko's eyes soften a little. Talia and Himiko. There, there with the league. Izuku's eyes widened. What? No, not like that. Th they. They're there for something. I don't think they want to help the league. I think they're there for you. Izuku scrunched his eyebrows in confusion. I, they, ten the hand moved to his neck again. I'm so sorry Izuku but I need to ask the questions. Izuku knew he wasn't talking to Tenko anymore. What do you want to know? He was trying to keep a little calm. You fought Stain, what do you think of him? His ideology. Why did he get more news coverage than all of our Namus? The hand tightened slightly. Hayes, I'm not sure Dot he attacked heroes, had a strong ideology, wasn't caught until he felt the familiar sensation of decay, but it was slower. The hand moved and he replaced it with his own to cauterize it. Luckily it was only small. Izuku. He turned and saw Yuraka standing there who's that? He didn't move his hand so she couldn't see. Oh you're with someone. Sorry Izuku I'll see you later and with that Shigaraki left. Izuku still hadn't moved his hand. Izuku who was that? Are you okay? 
He finally moved his hand and saw a little blood making Yuraka gasp. It's nothing Yura, I'll be right back. He moved past her and went to the bathroom. Looking in the mirror and saw a line where it had decayed. He grabbed a paper towel and cleaned it up. Oi, Zuchin. What the hell Katsuki cut himself off seeing Izuku's neck what happened? Izuku tried to hide it but Katsuki didn't let him. Shigaraki was here. Katsuki's eyes widened it was Tenko at first but then he slipped back again and then I said something and then Yura was there and Izuku slowed down a little I'm okay he left. I'm not bleeding. I'm a little freaked out but I'm okay. Katsuki stared at him. Okay, okay. He took a deep breath and okay. We are finishing up here. Then we are getting your ass to recovery girl or I swear to god. Izuku nodded. Right, right. The bus was loud as everyone shouted over each other, all of them talking excited about what they might do on the trip, except Izuku. The teen couldn't help staring out the window trying to pin down why he had such a strange feeling. You okay? He jumped a little and turned to Shinsu who looked slightly worried. No not really. Shinsu waited for him to explain something feels off about the trip, I think something might happen. Shinsu nodded in understanding. Yeah I know what you mean, something does seem off dot but there'll be heroes so we should be fine, right? Shinsu asked, smiling at Izuku who smiled back before looking back out the window. Hopefully. Hey, wake up we're stopping. Shinsu shook Izuku awake, who had been leaning on his shoulder. Izuku blinked a few times before standing up and following after Shinsu. Why'd we stop? I have to use the bathroom. Where's the other class? Izuku listened to everyone ask questions while he stretched his wings and arms. Oh, sorry Shouto. He turned so that his wings weren't hitting Shouto. You're fine. Izuku nodded and fixed his gloves a little. Hey eraser head. The class turned and saw two women and a kid walking over to them. Pixie Bob, Mandalay, good to see you. Izuku sent a small wave to Kauta who waved back with a smile and nodded to the pussycats present. Hello students, we are the wild wild pussycats. They both did poses with some of the students clapping. That doesn't really answer why we stopped though. Yeah, I gotta use the bathroom. Izuku was wondering too, though he felt like his question was answered when he felt the ground shift slightly. He looked down and saw it moving almost like water, no one else seemed to notice so he looked to Aizawa who only smirked at him. How far away are we? I say a few miles. Think they'll make it. The others seemed to catch on and try to run back to the bus. Everyone run. Oh no you don't. The ground broke out from under them as they all screamed. Izuku jumped up and twisted so that way he landed at the bottom safety. Is everyone okay? He asked, helping some of the others up. You have three hours. Everyone looked to where the adults still stood come to the facility on your own two feet. After making it through Dot the Beast's forest, Minda didn't listen as he ran off into the forest. Izuku looked around a little before hearing what sounded like a dull roar. He whipped his head around and used infrared to see Minda there and a weird mass that didn't light up. Duck. He flew forward and activated the blades on his wings. Shouto began freezing it. Ida ran forward. And Katsuki activated his quirk. All four easily destroying the beast in their path. There's more of these fuckers. Katsuki yelled as they heard one take off into the air. Should we run away? This is no joke. If we don't make it back by noon we don't get lunch. Then we have no choice then to go through here and take the shortest route. Momo spoke up getting everyone's attention. All right. Let's go everyone. Ada shouted as people got into fighting stances. Everyone started attacking beasts together. Izuku looked up and saw the flying one from before. Kirishima. The redhead cheered while grabbing onto Izuku's hand. He spun in the air a few times before launching Kirishima at the beast and destroying it. Bekubro. Catch. Katsuki looked up and smirked. Jesus shitty hair. He used his explosions to get a little higher and caught Kirishima before landing on the ground and continuing to fight. Izuku flew down and broke another beast with his blades. He landed in a crouch and saw Shinsu nearby who had pushed Kota out of the way before punching the beast in the eye. Itoshi. Catch. Izuku tossed the knife he had on him to Shinsu. Thanks. Three more up ahead. Shoji called to them. Izuku. Can you use your quirk to see them up high? And any more in the air? Izuku nodded to Momo as he took off again. This way he could also see where the lodge was. Five more ahead of the three. Two more in the sky. We're heading the right way. He flew up higher and ahead till he was above one of the beasts and over three others. He lit his legs before dropping hard onto the beast and burning its wings. The beat roared as it began falling to the ground. Adding more strength to his fire he caused it to fall faster. Watch out. He called in case anyone was under him. The beast crashed and destroyed the smaller ones under it. The one under him roared as it turned and slashed at him. He jumped back dodging it as Ida came up and destroyed it the rest of the way. Thanks Tenya. Ida nodded as they both charged forward and continued on. Izuku flew up again but couldn't see the other beast anymore. He flew back down and looked around confused. What's wrong? Yuraka asked as her and Su ran up to him. There was another beast in the sky. It's not there anymore. The other two looked up but jumped when there was a louder roar than before. What was that? 
Hiro. Izuku looked up and saw the beast from before but this time it was almost 2x as large. Izuku glared and crouched before pushing off and flying into the sky. He grabbed onto the beast's leg and began climbing it until he rested on its back. He dug his hands into the dirt of its back and took a breath before forcing fire between the rocks. He added more fire and made it as hot as he could. The beast roared before it broke apart. Izuku panted as he held himself up before descending again. Izuku, are you okay? Hiroraka asked. Placing a hand on his back, he panted a little and nodded. Why yeah just dot 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 just need a break with my fire. He stood up fully come on we gotta go. Wow, you all made it out faster than I expected, Mandalay said, looking at the students who were trudging from the forest. Izuku was leaning on Shinsu but was otherwise fine. The overheating from before was long gone. Especially you four. You acted so fast. Pixie Bob pointed to Katsuki, Ada, Shouto and Izuku. Well since you came so late you'll have dinner instead. We already prepared it for you, but this is the only time. Got it. Tiger shouted as they walked up to the group with Ragdoll. I have a question. Who are the kids? The students looked over and saw two kids walking over, though they picked up the speed and immediately jumped onto Izuku. Naisan. Izuku. Izuku caught them and stumbled a little but otherwise stayed upright. Hi you two, have you been good? The two nodded as Izuku set them back down and crouched a little. That would be Kauta and Iri. Kauta's my nephew and Iri's his sister. They're Izuku's little siblings. Mandalay explained. Kaminari smiled and walked up to them. Hi, my name's Kaminari. He offered a hand to them making Iri stand a little behind Kauta who was glaring. Sorry, they get a little nervous about Izuku was cut off as Kauta punched the other where the sun doesn't shine. Kaminari fell over in pain as Katsuki burst out laughing and had to use Kirishima to stay upright. Izuku looked shocked before glaring at Kauta, though there wasn't any heat behind it. Kauta, don't do that. Kauta just huffed and turned away dragging Iri with him. He softened a little and watched after them before crouching down and trying to help Kaminari up. Sorry, are you okay? Kaminari just grunted and nodded his head. Yep, never been better. Kaminari's voice was a few pitches too high. They were all now sitting around eating food and talking though Izuku wasn't focused on the conversation. He was still a little worried about Kauta. He seemed so angry but Izuku didn't know why. He finished his food and grabbed two plates for Iri and Kauta. I'll be back later, he told Aizawa as he walked. Stay safe, tell them I said hi. He nodded and continued his walk into the forest and up the hill. He had seen the two of them walk that direction earlier and could see their footprints with night vision. He saw the two sitting near the cave messing around and drawing in the sand. Have you two eaten yet? Both jumped a little at his voice but calmed down when they knew it was him. Nice and, Iri ran up and hugged his leg before taking her food thank you. He saw Kauta glaring at him a little. He smiled and sat down next to where they had been. You hungry Kauta? He just huffed again. Izuku sat the food down and put his hand on Kauta's hat you angry at me. Kauta nodded but was at least talking to him I'm sorry, is it something I said? No, Iri looked a little upset and set her own food down. Naisan, do you still love us? Izuku's eyes widened. What? Of course I do. Iri looked close to crying while Kauta still looked pissed. Then why don't you hang out with us anymore? Kauta shouted standing up. Izuku looked between both of them, he didn't even realize it. Of course the two were used to almost always being with him unless he was hurt, so when he was gone for a while they were probably worried. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to neglect you both. Kauta sat down and glared at him how about we have a little sleepover tonight. Then when this is all over we can go somewhere fun, okay. Piri gasped and smiled wide while Kauta sighed. Fine dot but don't do it again. The two hugged him again and he smiled patting them both on the head. Never will. Now eat food so we can head back and get some sleep okay. They both nodded and started eating their food quickly, excited about the sleepover. Once they both finished Izuku carried the two down the mountain and saw everyone was finishing up. He nudged Kauta a little who huffed but walked over to Kaminari who looked nervous. I'm sorry Dot for punching you earlier. Kaminari smiled. Don't worry about it. I'm sure your brother already lectured you. Wanna join us? Kauta nodded and climbed onto Katsuki's lap who started yelling at him, even though he wasn't forcing the other off. The group was heading to the springs before Mandalay took Kauta to have some fun while the other two kept going. Do you want to go with the other girls, Iri? Izuku asked. She looked nervous until Momo walked up. Hi, Iri. Why don't you come with us? We can have fun, okay? She nodded excitedly as the girls kidnapped her and Izuku went in with some of the guys. He walked into the changing room and felt a little nervous. He wasn't a fan of people looking at his scars, which is why he wore gloves on his hands since they had some of the worst scars. He sighed as he changed, putting a towel around his waist and using his wings to cover most of his back and chest. He walked out and sat on the edge with his legs in the water with Ida, Shinsu, and Shouto next to him talking. You okay Izuku? You look a little uncomfortable. Ida pointed out. Yeah sorry, just a little dot self-conscious I guess. Shouto nodded in understanding. I get the same about my scar. It is quite alright Izuku. 
We respect your privacy, Ada said while chopping his arms. Sonic's right. No one's gonna blame you. Izuku smiled and nodded at them. Thanks, Shoji and Takoyami soon joined the four and began talking about ways they thought they could improve with their quirks before Ajiro and Kaminari interrupted them. Minta what are you doing? Kaminari asked, a little confused. Dude, get away from the wall. Everyone was looking at him and yelling for him to get down. Ada stood up and began walking towards him while Izuku watched them carefully. He could see Kauta at the top ready to stop Minta. When he started climbing though Izuku glared and started standing up, though he was soon pushed down leaving Ida to catch him. You really call yourself a hero. Kauta glared and Izuku smiled and waved at him. Thanks Kauta. Yeah you're the best. Kauta nodded to them and turned to walk away. But he ended up tripping and falling over the side. Izuku acted fast and quickly caught him. Though Kauta passed out from the shock. I'm gonna take him inside. Izuku walked inside and set him down. He had stayed with Kauta, though he did end up changing into a black sweatshirt and shorts. He was sitting on the couch with Kauta in his lap when Mandalay walked into the room. Oh, Izuku, is he okay? He nodded and let her sit down. He tripped and fell off the fence after stopping Minta. She nodded. Yeah, I asked him since Aizawa warned me about that one. Glad to know he's okay though. Have you all enjoyed your stay here so far? She joked a little making Izuku crack a smile. It's been fun, can't wait for what you have in store for tomorrow though. Mandalay laughed. Of course of course, she said. Kauta and Iri's room is next to your guys' rooms, I'm sure she's ready to sleep too. She stood up and showed him where the room was. Thanks Mandalay, I'll lay him down and go get Iri. He walked out of the room into the girls who were all inside talking and laughing. He knocked and waited for one of them to answer. Izuku, Toru greeted dragging him and look at Iri. Isn't she cute? Iri was sitting in the middle with her hair in a bun and her nails painted blue. My san don't I look pretty? Izuku smiled and giggled before picking her up. You look very pretty Iri, ready to go to bed. She nodded and yawned okay, thanks for looking after her. Of course, she was so fun, we'll have to steal her again. He nodded and walked out of the room heading back to their room. How come he gets to go into the girl's room? Cause he's not a fucking perverted asshole. Izuku woke up the next morning to quiet knocking on his door. He sat up a little and saw both Kauta and Iri curled up under his wings asleep. He moved a little and tucked them back into the blanket before standing up and going to the door to see Manda lay there. Good you're awake. Go ahead and get dressed we have work to do today. She whispered to him. He nodded and closed the door as she left before changing. Morning. Shinsu greeted as Izuku joined the rest of the class outside. Morning. Do you know what we're doing? Shinsu shook his head before the heroes started talking. G-O-O-O-D morning. Everyone responded a little tiredly well that won't do. We'll have to wake you up more, but today, we'll be helping you train more with your quirks. Aizawa. The teacher walked up and handed the ball to Katsuki. Throw it. Katsuki smirked before throwing the ball as hard as he could with his quirk. The explosion seemed so much more powerful than the first time they did this. Though when he showed the score it shocked all of them with how low it was you all have been through a lot and your bodies have adapted. You've become stronger, but your quirks have gained the same amount of experience. We're here for you all to improve, I expect you all to go plus ultra got it. Yes sensei. With that everyone was separated to work on their own quirks. Though Izuku wasn't sure what they wanted him to do. Izuku, he turned to Aizawa, I want you to do a few of these things on this list, then I want you to spar later with Todoroki. Izuku nodded and took the list, it was pretty self-explanatory. Stay in the air as long as possible, keep his fire active, practice his non-burning fire more, etc. He decided to do the first two at the same time since it would be easier and better training. Going over to a clearing he set the list down by one of the trees before stretching his wings out and lighting himself on fire. He started off simple, only setting his arms on fire before it slowly started to spread. Once he was fully on fire he took off and flew around the height of the trees. He didn't want to go too high in case he wasn't able to land properly. While he floated up there he extended his fire out around him and raised the temperature making it turn blue. He tried to focus on keeping it in control without letting it spread to the rest of the area around him. He wasn't sure how long he was up there since he had his eyes closed. He knew at some point he should train with someone else to fight like that but it could wait. After a while though he could feel a little bit of his control slip away from him before he yanked it back. His wings began to get tired as well. Landing back on the ground he snuffed out the fire and flexed his wings a little. Izuku, he turned to see Tiger standing there. Aizawa has informed me that you need training, and I am here to provide it. Thank you Tiger, but are you sure? If I lose control you could get burned. Small memories flashed behind his eyes. No worries, I trust you. Now let's begin. Izuku nodded his head and lit his hand on fire making sure to watch Tiger closely for any hesitance. When he didn't see any he sent a small amount to Tiger before letting it spread, only over one arm though. Fantastic. I must assist some of the others so follow along. Izuku followed after him to see 1B looking shocked. Izuku, light one of them on fire as well. 
Izuku looked at them hesitantly before a guy walked up smugly. Allow me, after all, I doubt it'll do much. Izuku nodded his head, lighting another hand on fire and touching the other's arm. He seemed a little hesitant but let it happen. When it didn't burn him though he calmed down. Monoma, copy his quirks. Vlad King shouted before going to some of the other students. Izuku was a little worried since he knew all of his quirks at once could be painful and difficult to control at first. You might want a Monoma cut him off with a scoff. Oh please, I can handle a few measly quirks just fine. Izuku looked at him for a moment, seeming to realize he wouldn't listen to reason. When Monoma touched him though he yelped and covered his eyes and ears before falling to the ground. Are you okay? Izuku whispered since he knew the other could hear him just fine. God, why is it so loud and bright? Monoma also whispered back. Izuku used one of his wings to cover him from the sun and covered his ears. Take a few deep breaths, then open your eyes. Monoma did what he said and looked calmer after okay. You only copied one right. The other nodded okay. Wait till that one is gone before you do another. Izuku was trying to stay focused on the situation, but with his attention divided on the fire on Tiger, the fire on Monoma, and the quirk control for Monoma it was a little difficult. He took a moment himself to try and gain full control again rather than just a small string of it. I'm ready for the next one. Izuku nodded and offered his arm this time. When Monoma touched it his arm immediately caught on fire what the hell. He tried to shake it off, but it only resulted in a beam being shot at the ground. Izuku extinguished it before making the fire Monoma was using to do the same. Monoma, you need to calm down. The fire reacts to emotion. The stronger emotion the more chaotic it will act. The other seemed to realize and took a breath again before he was able to toss a small ball of fire between his hands. Huh. This is simple. Boo. Monoma jumped and almost hit a waist with the fire. Izuku caught it before it landed though. Thanks for the catch. Waste. I told you not to do that. Kendo hit him before making him get back to work. Izuku looked back to him and smiled slightly. You had great control for the first time. If you wanted to try more I'd be willing to help. Monoma scoffed again. Oh please, I wouldn't need to waste my time, though I don't mind wasting yours. Izuku nodded and took a moment again to make sure his control was secure. Izuku, come here. The teen turned to Aizawa and nodded, extinguishing the fire on the two before running over. Is everything okay? Aizawa nodded and led him over to Shouto, who was in a large barrel before hopping out panting. You and Todoroki will spar. I only want you to use your fire while he fights with both. Make sure it's out of the way from other students. The two nodded and moved over to where Izuku was originally. Izuku made his wings disappear and stood still. He saw Shouto stretch before getting into a normal fighting stance. The two stared at each other before Shouto shot fire at him. Izuku shifted back a little before punching the stream. It shifted around his arm before it disappeared. Shouto then sent a large wave of ice, only for Izuku to launch a beam of fire from the same hand and melt it almost instantly. The two then ran at each other. Shouto dodged a burning leg from Izuku and sent a smaller wave of ice under him before sending a wave of fire above him. Izuku flipped back, used one hand to control the fire and the other to melt the ice. When he landed he sent the fire back to Shouto who dodged and sent a larger wave of ice. Instead of melting it Izuku jumped over and slid down coming face to face with Shouto before they both slipped into hand to hand combat. Izuku dodged a punch and jumped back before sending a fan of fire. When Shouto tried to dodge he tripped over Izuku's leg, who then pinned him to the ground. I give, Izuku stood up and helped Shouto up that was quite impressive Izuku. You work amazingly with your quirk. Thanks Shouto, you're getting good at yours, if you ever need help I don't mind. He nodded before going over to the list and seeing what else he had to do. After they finished training everyone was tired from all the work and hungry. You have to cook all on your own. What? The class yelled as the pussycats showed them the ingredients. Yep, we told you, we only cook for one that one night. The class groaned and began to pick up the ingredients and tools. Izuku grabbed a few and started helping Momo and Takoyami set up. He knew most of the basics and was helping Momo since she really didn't know what she was doing. Then you just set this on here with this inside it. He crouched and lit the fire under it then let it cook till it seems ready. Momo clapped a little with stars in her eyes. Wow Izuku, you seem quite experienced. Izuku nodded and dusted his hands off a little. Momo then went over to a different one and did like Izuku had shown her. The others were lighting the fires or cutting the food. Oi Zuchin, come help me. Izuku walked over to where Katsuki was cutting up the vegetables quickly get the rest of them nerd. Izuku nodded and picked up a knife beginning to cut as well. Wow Bakugu, you're really talented. Your Araka complimented watching him. Of course I am. I'm the fucking best round face. Izuku could only laugh at them before he focused back onto his own. He zoned out slightly while cutting and didn't realize someone was walking behind him. Oh, watch Izuku was bumped and cut the palm of his hand on the knife. He stopped and looked at his hand. Since it cut through his gloves you couldn't really tell where the blood was. Oh Izuku, I'm so sorry. He looked at Momo and Kaminari and waved them off. It's okay, I'll be right back. 
He began walking over to where the building was when he heard someone follow him. I'll come with, don't want you bleeding out. Shinsu joked as he walked next to the other. Izuku laughed and used his hand to cover his mouth, not realizing it was his cut hand. He moved it realizing there was now blood on his face too. Crap. Shinsu laughed a little before taking out a cloth and whipping it off thanks Satoshi. No problem. The two walked into the building, with Izuku going to find his first aid kit. He brought it out and sat on the couch about to fix his hand when Shinsu stopped him. Here, I'll do it, sit back. Izuku was hesitant but did as he was told and took off one of his gloves. Shinsu paused when he saw the amount of scars on them and how his fingers were slightly crooked. Izuku moved his hand back a little but not very far since Shinsu grabbed onto it. The two sat in silence as Shinsu wrapped his hand carefully. When he finished Izuku flexed his hand a little before the other spoke. Did the scars come from Izuku already knew what he was asking and nodded. Yeah, they never healed properly but... It's okay, I don't mind them being ugly. Shinsu grabbed his gloved hand in his and looked Izuku in the eyes. I don't think it's ugly. Izuku blushed a little, besides, means you survived right. Izuku's blush climbed, though he nodded while looking to the side. I um, thanks Satoshi dot 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 we should probably head back. Shinsu looked at their hands before blushing and letting go. Yeah let's go. Throughout the day the class worked as hard as possible to try and improve their quirks. At the end of the day though the wild wild pussycats had a surprise. A test of courage. The class cheered. Hell yeah. This'll be so fun. Aizawa smirked and used his capture weapon to catch Kirishima, Siro, Mina, Kaminari, and Sato. Not you five. You have extra classes for failing. The five groaned and tried to get away though it was in vain as Aizawa simply dragged them away. Now everyone draws sticks to decide your partners. Everyone came up and started getting different ones. Izuku thought it was funny though that Shouto and Katsuki had been put together. Looks like we're partners. Shinsu showed him the same stick as Izuku had, who smiled. Looks like it. The group started going through and screaming like crazy, making Shinsu and Izuku laugh a little before Shinsu realized something. Wait, you have infrared and night vision right? Izuku nodded so you'll see them. They both paused for a second before they started laughing again. This is gonna be fun. Shinsu joked already coming up with fun ideas, though it didn't last long as Izuku moved and started looking around the forest. What's wrong? Izuku looked around again before his eyes widened. They're here, he turned to Shinsu. We have to warn everyone. The league's here. Wait Izuku. Izuku paused for a moment and looked to Shinsu how do you know? I can hear them. There's someone with a smoke quirk or something. We need to get everyone back here and he stopped hearing a girl scream Iri. Kauta and Iri. Itoshi warned them. Someone's attacking Iri and Kauta. He didn't give the other a moment to respond before he was running through the forest, using his wings to make himself go faster. Iri was crying. That's what Kauta was trying to focus on, instead of the looming figure with a white mask and black body stomping towards them. Kauta, Iri, can you hear me? I don't know where you are but you need to come back to camp now. The two took steps back as the man got closer I tried looking for you both but I couldn't find you. Please come back. Izuku's coming for you both. They knew they were in danger, but the knowledge that Izuku was coming for them made them feel better. I tried searching for some place with a nice view, and ended up finding a face not on our list. They both scrambled back as he got closer, Kauta trying to think of how to protect her like Izuku would want him to. Hey, by the way, you've got a nice hat there kid. He pointed to his mask trade me for this lame mask. They made me wear it since I'm new, saying they couldn't get it in time or something. He began to pull down his mask. That's when Kauta shoved Iri and they both began to run. Oh hey, he jumped from the ground to the wall and landed in front of them. Kauta shoved Iri behind him let me get a shot and to cheer up. Muscle tissue began to come out of the man's arm as he prepared to attack come on. Kauta saw the man's face and froze, remembering what little he knew about his parents' death before he was kidnapped. He felt tears begin to pour down his face. You. They both took a step back again as the man seemed to grow bigger mom dot and dad just as a punch was about to land a figure flew in and grabbed Iri and Kauta. The punch landed on them making them spin and land further away on the ground. Izuku slowly got up, quickly looking Iri and Kauta over before getting up and stretching his wings out with his arms on fire. Now you, were on the list. Izuku glared at the villain. Looking behind him he saw Iri and Kauta holding onto each other. He looked over and saw that his phone had been broken from the landing. He felt a slight stiffness in his right wing but otherwise was fine. He wouldn't be able to get them out without the man following or attacking them and he couldn't call for help. He had to protect them. The thought itself reminded him of the time in the league. Kauta Iri the two looked at him with fear in their eyes. He crouched lower to the ground I'll protect you both understand. Stay behind me. The man cackled as he walked closer. You'll protect them. That sounds like someone trying to play hero. More muscle came out of his arm your kind show up out of nowhere talking about justice. Izuku glared and let more fire flow over him. The temperature turning hot enough that it was blue. You're called Midori you're right. Izuku shifted slightly at the name. No one called him that anymore this is perfect. 
The man's arm started growing we were told to take you in with us. Too bad I'm not supposed to kill you though. Izuku was a little shocked. But if they didn't want him dead then maybe Tenko was still trying to break out. But maybe. I can lie. He grabbed his cloak and began to take it off. Say you were too strong. You or me. Leave your body here and kill the kids too. Ripping it off he smiled widely so show me your blood. He pushed off the ground and lunged towards them. Izuku put his arm up to block the punch. He was sent into the side of the mountain, making a crater appear around him. Oops, I almost forgot. If you know, tell me. Izuku fell to the ground for a moment before getting back up. Muscular walked closer to him where's the kid called Bakugu. He paused for a moment. Why did they want Katsuki? There wasn't a reason. I still have to do my job. He lunged at Izuku who jumped away and skid off to the side. It didn't matter why they wanted Katsuki at the moment. What mattered was getting Kauta and Uri somewhere safe. He can't do that if he's stuck somewhere else. Izuku hit the button that activated the blades on his wings. He flinched when it snapped into place, making it obvious his wings were injured. He tried to blast him with his fire, but the man blocked it, seeing no damage Izuku glared. I'll take that as a maybe. I can, right. He shifted to face Izuku all right then. At least I can say I tried to interrogate you. So let's play. He kicked at Izuku who caught it and dug his hands in, trying to burn him again. It didn't do much as the kick forced him into the mountain again. He fell to the ground, trying to get the blood out of his eyes. His wings definitely would be an issue now if they weren't before. Blood. This is great. This is what I wanted. He tried to get up. His head still wasn't in the fight. He was trying to keep focus on the kids, on Katsuki, on everyone. What do you say earlier? That you protect them. His eyes widened. He couldn't let those two see him like this. They worried about him enough. They didn't need to see him like this again. Why do you keep running then? He slowly got up and growled. I am not running. He bolted up and spun, trying to cut some of the muscle with his blades. Muscular only laughed, grabbed one of his wings, and flung him back on the ground. You're so weird. He got up again and looked to Kauta and Iri for a moment before looking back to Muscular. He had to focus or he could die. He needed to get Iri and Kauta to safety before that. I should be bragging. Izuku ran at the man only to be blown away by a punch to the ground. Debris hitting him as he flew into the air. Trying to use his wings to stable him distracted him from the fight giving Muscular the chance to kick him into the ground again. They said it would be hard to even get a grip on you. He was panting now. The blood back in his eyes and more coming from different injuries you'll protect them. How? Don't just say shit and not do it. Muscular stood over him be honest with yourself. A rock and water hit Muscular, stopping him from attacking Izuku again. Mom. Dad. You killed them. I won't let you hurt another part of my family. Leave him alone. Izuku's eyes widened. They should have ran when Muscular wasn't looking. Why were they still here? Huh? Seriously? Muscular turned around and looked at them, seeming to stare at Kauta your parents were the water hose. They're the reason I have a fake eye. He had a crazed smile on his face again. It's your fault. Izuku tried to get up on shaking arms it's people like you, who hurt my family. He suppressed a groan. He needed to get Muscular away from them, he couldn't let them get hurt. Kids are always shifting the blame like that. It's no good. Izuku wanted to take this guy's head off if he kept speaking to Kauta like that. It's not like I hold a grudge about the eye. I just like killing. Kauta and Ri gasped. They had never liked the thought of killing. Life was sacred to them and they wanted to stop me. He needed to get up. It's because we all did what we wanted. He finally got to his feet, but it was hard to keep standing without falling. What's wrong is wanting to do something you can't, like good old mommy and daddy. Muscular cackled as he tried to attack Kauta and Ri. Izuku bolted up, lighting up like a torch. He couldn't let them get hurt. Not now, not then, not ever. Which means you're coming, you piece of trash. Izuku stabbed one of the blades into his shoulder making him grunt, but he didn't pull back. Shut up. He dug his hands in, trying a similar tactic to when he fought the ground beasts, letting the fire flow through the cracks and light him from the inside out. There was a burst of wind, like an explosion pushing them both over the edge. Before they fell off though Izuku swooped down and caught them, setting them down on the ground and stepping in front of them. He locked eyes with a buried muscular. Enough space in the rocks allowed Izuku to see the man smile. Half of his shirt and his gloves had been burned off, ashes and dust in his hair. We need to Izuku was cut off as muscular punched his way out of the pile of rocks on him. Izuku growled and shifted in front of the kids again. He had gone all out on him and he was still alive, still standing. Not bad Midoriya. That almost hurt a little. Izuku rolled his shoulders back and put his hands out, lighting them before having them aimed at muscular. I don't care. I don't care what you want or what you do. You aren't hurting them. Muscular laughed and stalked towards them. Now that's a fighting spirit. I almost want to attack suddenly. He pulled out a different eye and put it in I'm getting serious. Kauta, Ari, both grabbed onto him even though it obviously hurt him. He flew up before Muscular could hit him and landed on the other side, both still holding onto him until he said otherwise. Muscular tried to land another hit making them fly back and fall to the ground. Stay down. Both let go and hid behind a different rock, watching from afar as Muscular freed himself of the rubble. 
When it hits, run to camp, don't look back. Nice Anne. We can't. Izuku turned to them and smiled. Don't. Look. Back. Go to dad and the others. He wasn't leaving room for argument. He had to protect them. That always came first, nothing else. It'll be okay. Muscular ran at him. He lit one hand before punching into the mass of muscles. The rocks around his feet cracked at the pressure as he tried to light the muscle on fire. The strength behind him pushed him back and made more stone break apart. He felt himself bend back as the ground crashed against him, more muscle appearing and replacing the burned ones. He could still hear Uri and Kauta shouting out to him. He couldn't let them be alone either, they only had him, Aizawa, and the others now, he couldn't leave them. He felt a scream tear through him as more fire appeared around him, shifting to blue before a bright white. He heard muscular laughing. He focused the fire in front of him till the villain couldn't keep up. With the small amount of breathing room he made the fire spread before it became a white beacon and threw muscular into the air. Keeping him there Izuku flew up and glared at the man. I told you, you won't hurt them. Then he made the fire disappear. As muscular free fell he lit his hand on fire before punching and burning the man into the ground. He landed next to the burnt crisps and listened. When the other didn't get up he fell to his knees panting. Nai Sam, are you okay? Uri ran over, flinching a little when she felt how hot Izuku was. Kauta came over, holding the cloak that the man had been wearing and handing it to Izuku. He took it and draped it along himself, his shirt having been burned in the fight. Thank you. He slowly stood up, almost falling before catching himself. Stretching his wings he could tell they were hurt, but he needed to get these two back to camp. Come on, we have to go. The two let him pick them up as he jumped off the ledge, flying closer to the ground of the forest. After a while he saw Aizawa and sighed in relief. Dad. The man turned around and saw Izuku land unsteadily as the two got off of him take them back to camp. The league's here, they're looking for Kaken. Aizawa looked shocked. Izuku what he couldn't stop here. Katsuki needed him and the others could be in danger. I'm sorry but I can't stay. Please protect them. He took off again. Not listening as Aizawa called after him. He flew until he came across the Pussycats and Shinsu. Mandalay. The woman turned to him and looked horrified. I found Kauta and Uri, they're safe. The league is after Katsuki Bakugu, please tell everyone. Izuku Yushinsu tried to stop him. I'm sorry but I have to find Kaken and make sure he's okay. Shinsu stared at him. I'm coming to then, you're a mess, let me help. Izuku stared at him. He needed to leave and the help would be good. Come on. The two ran back into the forest leaving Mandalay to transmit the message to everyone. We're being attacked by two villains. It's possible there's more. Everyone in the small classroom stood up as Aizawa tried to focus on her voice. Anyone that can move get back to camp immediately. Even if you run into an enemy do not engage and run. Vlad. The teacher turned to Aizawa I'm leaving this place to you. Why are the villains here? It was a good question. All Might wasn't here and it was just the students. But Izuku was here and he now had three ties to the group. I'll go protect the other students. He heard Vlad say something but ignored it as he ran to the exit. When he made it outside he saw blue fire coming from the forest and knew it wasn't Izuku's. Is her worry taking precedent erasure? He turned sharply and saw a hand by his face and lit up with the same blue flames. Taui he was cut off as the flames burst forward. He used his capture weapon to get out of the way. Well I guess you are a pro after all. Taui looked at him with a smile. Aizawa activated his quirk and glared at him. He raised a hand but both knew nothing would come from it. Aizawa used his capture weapon and trapped him before pinning him to the ground. Tell me your numbers, positions, and purpose. He felt Taoya tense under him but the other teen was still smiling at him like it was nothing. He looked to the forest after hearing loud crashes what was that? Aizawa sensei. He looked over and saw some of his students emerge from the forest. Are you in a hurry eraser? Taoya was able to get up but not break free from the weapon are your students important? Then like that he turned to mud in front of him hey hero, I hope you can protect them all. Aizawa paused. There was something in his eyes, like screaming almost as he disappeared. Everyone back to camp. Stay with Vlad King. Aizawa ran into the forest starting to search for students, a specific student. Dad. He turned at the voice and felt relief for a moment before seeing Izuku's state. He had blood running down his face. His wings looked bloody and slightly crooked. His shirt and gloves looked almost burned off, and he was covered in more bruises and blood take them back to camp. The league's here, they're looking for Kaken. Why would they be looking for Bakugo? There wasn't a suitable reason. Izuku what he didn't let Aizawa finish as he ran. Using his wings slightly for a boost, back to where the other pussycats were fighting. Aizawa picked up Uri and Kauta who both looked terrified. Dad. He turned to Uri will nice and be okay. Aizawa looked at her. She had small scratches but was fine. He will. He started running to where the other heroes were. He needed to send a message he has no intention of dying. He'll be okay. He didn't know who he was saying that to at this point. You have permission to use your quarks from a racer hat. Achako, is your arm okay? Sue asked. Her shirt was slightly red but the cut wasn't deep enough to hurt too much. Yeah, just grazed me. They looked at the girl in front of them. Shallow dot not much blood. 
If they didn't know better they would think her voice sounded almost thankful about it, like she didn't want to hurt them. Who are you? I'm Himiko Toga. You two are really pretty though. She pointed the knife at them Uraraka and Sue. I remember you. She knows our names. Uraraka took a small step back. Probably from the sports festival. Sue tried to reason. It made sense. Everyone had seen it either way we're at a disadvantage here. I'm sorry about this but she pulled out a weird looking cylinder connected to a tube but I need more blood. This machine will get it for me. Was she warning them? Why was she telling them all this? She's coming. Sue used her tongue and wrapped it around Uraraka Achako. She threw Uraraka into the air get back to camp. We have permission to use our quirks not to feed the villains but to protect ourselves. That's the kind of person Aizawa sensei is. Sue so you too. Sue crouched. Of course I will. But before she could she turned to Toga who cut her tongue with the knife. Atsu, how sweet to save your friend. Don't call me that. Only my friends can call me that. Sue tried to jump away but Toga threw the needle, catching her hair and holding her to a tree. Ah, maybe we can change that one day. I'd love to be your friend. Sue, Yuraraka landed and started running towards them. You're bleeding, I like the color red, but it doesn't look as cute on you. Get away from her. Toga lunged at her with the knife. She dodged and grabbed onto her wrist, twisting it, and pinning her to the ground. That was amazing Achako. She looked at the girl still stuck in the tree. Sue, can you restrain her hands with your tongue? Does it hurt? Give me a second for my tongue. Achako, your Raka looked to Toga you're a great fighter. Izuku and Shinsu ran through the forest looking around for other students. Izuku could hear something big up ahead, but it was hard to see. Get down. He felt someone tackle him to the ground as something large passed over them. Are you both okay? He looked up and saw Shoji covering them from a shadowy figure. Is that Takoyami? Izuku asked as they all stood up quietly. Shoji nodded his head. Dark Shadow freaked out when Mina was hurt. Izuku saw that Shoji was bleeding. His weakness is light. Izuku lit his hand on fire before looking off in the distance I have an idea. Shoji, take Hitoshi and run that way. He pointed to where he could see four people I'll be right behind you with Dark Shadow following. Are you sure? Izuku smiled and nodded. Trust me, go. Shoji picked up Shinsu and started running to where Izuku had pointed. Dark Shadow seemed to take interest before Izuku shot fire at him up here. It was harder and painful to fly, but if the plan was going to work he needed the air. The creature screeched at him before chasing after him. The creature lunged at Izuku, catching onto the cloak he was wearing. He ripped it off before throwing it at Dark Shadow and picking up speed, already seeing Shinsu and Shoji there. He saw a villain above them with ice surrounding him. When they got close enough Izuku ducked and dropped his wings before rolling and skidding down onto one knee. They all watched as Dark Shadow took down the villain. As soon as it was over Izuku sent fire around Dark Shadow to make him retreat. I am sorry, I didn't want to attack you. Takoyami apologized. Izuku stood back up a little shakily before joining the group. Is everyone okay? They all looked to him and he saw the mood change. What the fuck? The hell happened? Katsuki grabbed onto his arm making Izuku wince before Katsuki let go. I got into a fight protecting Yuri and Kauta. They're after you Kaken. We have to get to camp now. Shouto seemed to snap out of it and looked to the others. He's right. We're too exposed here. We need to leave. Izuku looked through the forest and saw three bodies not far from them. He squinted a little before turning his body towards them. There's three people over there. One's pinned, another stuck to a tree, and someone holding the other down. It might be some of the others. Let's go. The group ran towards them with Izuku looking out for anything. He didn't want to believe it but he already knew that Taoya was here. If Himiko was here then, Tenko was telling the truth. Once they got close he saw Katsuki, Shouto, and Shinsu freeze next to him. His eyes widened as he saw the scene. Himiko. The group looked confused as the blonde on the ground looked at him with a sad smile. She broke out of Yuraraka's hold and tried to run. Izuku flew forward and tackled her, pinning her on the ground again, using his wings to shield them from the others. What are you doing here Himiko? He glared at her. He wanted it all to be a lie, that Himiko, Taoya, and Tenko weren't the villains in this story. Izuku. She kept smiling at him before she frowned I'm sorry. She twisted the knife in her hand and tried to attack Izuku. He dodged in shock letting her run can't get caught just yet. He watched her leave before turning to the others. Are you two okay? Shinsu helped Sue from the tree while Takoyami looked at the blood on Yuraraka's arm. Why yeah, here. She took her top shirt off and used it to whip the blood from his face and his eyes Izuku don't how did you know her? He glared at the ground before his eyes widened and he looked around. Where's Kaken? Everyone began looking around and found him missing. Izuku used infrared again and looked everywhere to see someone above them there. He flew up and tackled the person causing them to crash into the ground. Oh, it's someone else on our list. This'll be fun. Izuku felt rage bubble up inside him, letting the fire burn around him making it turn the same burning white as before. The villain looked panicked and ready to run. Give him back. He tried to attack the other but blue flames shot at him. He twisted and guided the flames with him, turning them white, before firing them back at the attacker. 
He looked over to them, panting, and glared seeing Taoya who looked shocked I'm not asking twice. The fire around them grew brighter give him back. The two villains didn't make a move, pissing Izuku off even more. He growled before trying to attack the other villain again. This time when Taoya shot at him he directed it to the other villain making him trip and fall, letting go of a glass marble. Izuku almost grabbed it but was tackled by Taoya who tried to pin him. Stop. Fighting. Taoya grunted out as Izuku flailed Izuku. He whispered to the other, so the down villain couldn't hear them I need you to trust me, please. Izuku stopped for a moment. There was a reason Himiko and Taoya had left. Taoya. What's Izuku was cut off as someone barreled into Taoya and knocked him to the ground. He sat up and saw it had been Shoji. Izuku. Shinsu ran over and landed next to him we need to go come on. He stood up with Shinsu's help but paused remembering the marble. Shouto. The marble. Shouto ran over to grab it but Taoya got it first. Shouto stopped just in front of him with wide eyes and tears. Poor Shouto Todoroki. Couldn't save him. Izuku knew then they were playing someone, but it wasn't them. Taoya broke open the marble revealing Katsuki. Izuku's eyes widened as a portal opened behind them. Not thinking he broke from Shinsu's hold and ran after them. Aizawa rushed through the forest. He had heard someone screaming. It sounded in pain. All that was running through his head was the safety of the students, a specific two. He knew that Bakugu was in danger but Izuku had looked bad and needed medical attention most likely. He finally made it to a clearing and saw Yuraraka, Shoji, Tsu, Takoyami, Shouto, and Shinsu all standing there in different states. Yuraraka and Shouto were crying while the others just seemed too shocked to move. They were all staring at an empty area. He looked them over and saw blood. Is everyone okay? None of them moved or even acted like they heard him. Though Tsu twitched a little Tsu, is everyone okay? He asked again, getting her attention. She seemed to snap out of it and looked to him with tears in her eyes. It wasn't her that answered though. H he was. Daithi took them. Todoroki put a hand over his eyes and fell to his knees shaking slightly. W why was he dot why was he with them? Aizawa looked between them confused before it dawned on him. Where are Izuku and Bakugu? The group was silent as more tears ran down their faces until Shinsu spoke up. Taoya dot h i m i k o dot they were here. Aizawa's eyes widened a little. He had known Taoya was here but not Himiko they took Bakugu. Izuku went dot he went after them. Izuku pushed himself off of Dabai and looked around wildly, seeing the different villains surrounding him and Bakugu being held back by Shigaraki. He growled before screaming and attacking them. They all jumped back and tried to stay away or fight back. It didn't do much as Izuku simply dodged or flew at them. Now now Izu wouldn't want you to get hurt he whipped around panting and stared at Tenko. It was obvious that he was in control but couldn't show it. He only called him Izuku when he wasn't and Izu when he was. What the fuck do you want hand freak? Katsuki gritted out. Izuku could see and hear his heartbeat picking up with fear as the hand shifted, but he knew it was dragging away more. Well I just wanted to talk to you and Izu Izuku felt people approaching him and sent out a wave of flames making them jump back except for Taoya and Himiko. After all, I missed my brother and wanted to meet his friend. He could see Taoya and Himiko sending looks and Taoya making a motion with his hands. He remembered it from their time captive. You're no longer my brother. He could see the slight flinch from Tenko and planned on apologizing later let us go before the heroes get here. The screen on the wall flickered to life. I wouldn't worry about that. He felt himself stiffen and crouch a little lower. The last time he had heard that voice he was given an order he couldn't carry out after all. It's good to be with family isn't it? He glared and showed his teeth we aren't animals now are we Izuku. He felt himself almost involuntarily going to a more normal position before snapping himself out of it. Screw you. He growled out. He could see Taoya and Tenko still standing. Used to the punishments and playing villains. He could see Katsuki looking confused but catching on quickly. You seem to forget some of your manners. Perhaps we'll have to teach you again. Izuku froze as he felt something almost crawling out of him. See you soon Izuku. Suddenly black sludge came out of his mouth and started to surround him. It felt like blood was rushing past him. He could hear muffled yells but nothing else until everything went dark. Aizawa paced the halls of the hospital. He had checked on the students to make sure they were okay, but they could see right through him. Of course he was worried about them, but his kid had just been taken by the same people that brought him hell for almost 10 years. A lot of the class hadn't left Momo or Jairo's side since they arrived at the hospital. If they did it was because their parents or doctors forced them. Aizawa sensei. He turned to see Shinsu staring at the ground. He walked over and placed a hand on his shoulder. Is everything alright? It was a stupid question because of course it wasn't. Izuku and Katsuki were kidnapped. Taoya and Himiko were villains or something. And his students were in the hospital. Obviously it's not. Aizawa wasn't going to yell at him at the lack of respect but don't some of us have an idea. He paused for a moment. Tell me the plan. Shinsu seemed to light up and walked into Momo's room where Shouto, Iida, Momo, and Kirishima were all sitting and talking quietly. He's agreed. 
everyone leave. I want to talk to our new recruit, Tenko said as he stared at Bakugo who was sitting in chains. Some hesitated but they all left, except for Himiko and Taoya. Once they were sure no one else would hear Himiko took off the thing covering his mouth. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Bakugo shouted, making them jump back a little you. Your brother is fucking distraught ever since your dumbasses left. Taoya looked down to the ground a little you. The fucking brats and Zuchin loved you. You were their sister you bitch. Himiko's lip wobbled a little as he spoke and fucking you. Zuchin thinks the fucking world of you. No matter how many goddamn times you tried to kill him he had hope. Tenko was silent before glaring. Shut it. Katsuki's eyes widened a little this wasn't part of the plan. We were just supposed to get you. Have Taoya and Himiko contact the heroes then leave. But he followed you. He threw his hands in the air god he's so stupid. What the fuck did I miss? Himiko giggled while Taoya rubbed his eyes. Nenzu sent me and Himiko here to try and help Tenko before something bad happened. He's broken out of whatever was on him but it was a little too late. So when we knew they were going to attack you guys we came up with that plan. But Izuku followed us and now he has him. Tenko and Taoya got a dark look on their faces. Who the fuck is he? Why can't we go get him? Himiko reached around and took off some of the chains holding down though keeping his hands closed for the moment in case anyone walked in. It's not that simple. Tenko sat on the ground and put his head in his hands. He's always had a plan for Izuku but I don't know what it is. He always talked about me and Izuku ruling everything side by side but that was it. Will he do the same thing to him like he did you? Himiko asked. Ever since they joined Taoya made sure she knew everything. And her and Tenko got along well. No, it never worked on him. It's why they used bargaining chips and quirk suppressants on him. Tenko explained. He had been the most open to the change since he wasn't considered as mentally strong as the other two were. There's gotta be fucking something. Taoya pulled out a phone and dialed someone before walking away a little. Yeah dot 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 he has him dot 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 we don't know dot okay dot yep see you then dot we just run right. Straight to UA. Okay. He walked back over to the group with a frown. Nedzu said to go as planned. They're already planning something. He thinks some of your classmates are too. We wait here till the heroes show up and since Aizawa won't be with them we run and go straight to UA and let the heroes deal with them. None of them were too happy with the plan, but it was the only one they had. Izuku felt his body hit something cold and hard. He jolted up and looked around, only seeing darkness around him, even infrared and night vision showed nothing. It's good to see you again Izuku. He whipped around to the voice and saw nothing. He lit his hand on fire and held it close to him to make sure he still could see anything I hope you don't mind. We took the liberty to change your cloth. He froze and looked down, seeing the white button-up, black vest, and black dress pants. He looked closer and saw he had bandages wrapped around him. Sadly we don't have that old woman's quirk so that we'll have to do. He kept moving, turning and trying to see where all for one was. Show yourself. He looked and saw a blue light start to appear. It wasn't big but he could see it clearly now. Why don't you come join me for a moment? Izuku stood still before flying over to the light. He didn't land nor did he get too close to the chair and computer's distance won't help you. We both know that, but whatever makes you comfortable. You've never cared about my comfort. He remembered when All for One had tried to use that tactic on them. That he was secretly a caring man who only wanted to help them. It had almost worked on Tenko at the time. Oh I haven't been the best, but I want the best. For you and Shigaraki to rule the world and destroy those who all oppose you. Izuku flared his wings out a little and lit his hands on fire. The only people who oppose, oppose against you. We never wanted this. He knew he was letting his emotions get the best of him, but it didn't matter. It was likely he was either going to die or wish he was dead before the heroes could get to them. But you are both my legacy. It was truly a shame that Taoya Da or should I say Dabai never amounted to anything like you both did. The man stood up making Izuku fly back a little Shigaraki was so simple. He just wanted someone to save him Da and you, you my boy, he growled a little. It sounded like All Might when he said it you have the greatest potential. What are you talking about? He flew back a little more. It felt like something was trying to call for him, like a siren. Your quirks, your capacity to hold so many without losing yourself. All for one had on a smile as he spoke born with a powerful quirk, gaining one in a stressful situation, then extending it, being able to create another powerful one with a little. Shove of course. Izuku felt the fire burn brighter, turning to blue as tears left his eyes and turned to smoke. Stressful situation. A shove. That's what you call what you did. You made my life hell. You killed my parents. You took Tenko from me. You tried to get me to kill one of them. He went a little higher as the flames turned white you're the reason I'm like thigh. All for one smirked as he applied pressure to Izuku's throat. He held a finger to his lips and chuckled before dropping Izuku on the ground. Who began coughing and touching his throat, a bruise already appearing. That brain dot the willpower dot you remind me of someone you know. Izuku stood up on shaking legs and took a few steps back he also had a similar power dot I in sorts. He could hold power. Something I gave him. He turned to Izuku who scrambled back a little before something wrapped around him. 
Dragging him forward I wonder if you will last longer than he did. Everything ready? Shinsu asked as the group met outside the hospital. Yep. Aizawa sensei gave us the permission. We have the costumes and the tracker. Momo held up the small device that was still pinging somewhere. I must ask that we be careful. If it gets too dangerous I will not hesitate to drag you all out. Ada had been on the fence the entire time. Aizawa agreeing and helping, made him want to stay and help in any way he could. We will bro. Now let's go. Kirishima led them as they left. Shouto stayed near the back where Shinsu and Momo watched him before speaking. Todoroki. He looked to Momo I know we aren't incredibly close, but if you need to talk you can tell us. That seemed to get the two's attention as they all stopped for a moment. You're wondering why your brother was there right? Shinsu asked, getting shocked looks from Ada and Kirishima. Yeah, Todoroki looked down a little with a glare it doesn't make sense. He had talked to mom, Fayumi, Natsuo, he was at UA, then when stain happened he called us, telling us he was leaving with Himiko and going somewhere. Perhaps they went undercover. Ida suggested. He didn't know much but it would make sense after all, he seems close to you and the others, there isn't another reason he would wish to switch sides. Yeah maybe. Hiroshima slung his arm around Todoroki. Come on man, when we go there we'll drag them with us. Then you can ask all the questions you want. Todoroki smiled a little at that as they started moving again. Aizawa looked at the room of heroes that were supposed to save his kids. He honestly had more faith in his other kids than this group, though he was mostly focusing on the fact Endeavor was here. Eraser, he turned to Vlad King. I know we don't get along, because I don't like you. Vlad growled a little. Dude if you want to go with them to get Izuku and Bakugo we won't stop you. He uncrossed his arms and looked at Vlad in shock they are your students and one of your kids. Aizawa stared at him a little longer before smirking. Thank you Vlad. He quickly went to change back into his hero costume. It didn't matter which group got where, he was bringing his kids home. You are an interesting creature Midoriya Izuku. Izuku growled over the gag covering his mouth. He wished he could at least bite the doctor for even getting near him again. I'm thankful that all for one let us enjoy some time together. As he said that he jabbed a knife into Izuku's side making him flinch and growl again. He could feel the blood slowly slip down his leg before pooling on the floor. They had him strapped to a chair. Almost standing, with his hands and feet strapped down, his chest, arms, legs, and wings getting the same treatment. I wonder what quirk you'll receive next. Maybe healing, strength, the possibilities are endless. Izuku glared as the doctor removed the knife, looking at the wound curiously. It didn't change shame. Healing would have been interesting to witness. Maybe we should start small. He cleaned the knife a little before dragging it across his arms and neck. Not enough pressure to hurt him a lot, but enough to cut skin and leave marks that slowly bled. When nothing happened the doctor frowned again. HM? No healing then. He turned to one of the nurses in the room clean him up, we'll need him in good shape for the next tests. When the doctor left and the nurse got close Izuku thrashed at her, trying to break free and activate his quirk, only resulting in his chest glowing and a whimper of pain. Don't worry, this won't hurt. As she said that a needle was jabbed into his thigh. The liquid was a light blue. When it was injected he felt the same burning as the suppressants. It didn't knock him out but it made it impossible to move his body. He could still hear and see, but nothing else. The woman dragged him to a room before dropping him on the ground. She grabbed medical supplies and quickly treated his wounds. He's ready, doctor. The woman called as she dropped him into a new room. He looked around before freezing. He knew this area too well. Fantastic. Go ahead and exit. He felt the injection wear off as he slowly stood up. He looked around and saw the same blacked out windows and large vents now. I'm sure you remember this from last time. But please try to simply breathe through it. He growled before screaming and attacking one of the windows now now. Don't make this difficult. Soon a gas began to fill the room. Izuku used his wings and covered his face to not breathe it in before looking back at the window. He went to the other side of the room before running at it and ramming his shoulder into the glass over and over again. He smirked when the glass cracked and heard people panicking. With a kick he broke the window and jumped through it. He saw the nurse and doctor start yelling orders before he tackled the doctor and started punching him. Turning to the woman he growled before grabbing her head and slamming it into his knee before looking to the door and breaking it down too. Izuku, I really wish he would stop this. He whipped around and was grabbed by his face. Growling he tried to claw and kick the other those heroes have turned you into something feral haven't they? I'm sure we can fix that. He only growled more before he bit the other's hand that was rude. He was dropped on the ground. Getting into a low crouch he felt his quirk coming back to him doctor, please get another room ready. He backed up a little before feeling something prick his neck, making it burn again and hard to move. I think I know what his next quirk should be. The group had followed the tracker and were led to a warehouse. This isn't where Aizawa sensei said it was. Kirishima pointed out as they quietly walked between the buildings. Be careful, Ida whispered as Shinsu and Kirishima used the others to get up and peek inside the building. 
Holy shit. Before Ada could complain about the language both of them were getting down with shocked faces you need to see this. Todoroki and Ida went up before Shinsu helped Momo look. This isn't good. Momo said as they landed on the ground we need to Momo was cut off as they heard shouting coming from the building. What was that? They all stood frozen as they heard growls and shouts. That's Izuku. Shinsu spoke, using Todoroki to look again but not seeing anything. That's how he sounded at the camp, something's wrong. Aizawa stood with the heroes who were about to break into the base but something felt off. Are you ready? All Might asked. Aizawa would admit it, he was an idiot. But he cared a lot for the kids and was willing to risk everything for them. We're getting the kids back and figuring out what the hell is going on. Aizawa put his goggles on. They all stood outside the base, waiting for the right moment. If Aizawa didn't know better he would be surprised they were talking openly about their plans. All Might nodded to the other heroes, getting nods back. He looked to the door as everyone got into fighting positions. He knocked on the door a couple of times making conversation halt. Pizza. It was silent for a moment before All Might burst through the door, creating a shock wave and making everyone fly back. Aizawa was happy to notice that Bakugu wasn't locked up. He even seemed a little calm standing next to Talia, Himiko, and Tenko. That's when it dawned on him what was happening. He wrapped those three in cloth, signing to them that he knew. They nodded back as they pretended to be angry while All Might talked to Bakugu. Something felt off though, he was missing something. All Might, we need to Aizawa was cut off as all the villains and Bakugo began throwing up a black substance. It reminded Aizawa about Talia during the camp. No. Izuku tugged against the chains around his wrists, making them begin to bleed. He didn't know how long he had been fighting against them, but he wouldn't stop. Izuku Midoriya, my boy, if you would just listen Izuku screamed, cutting him off. I'm never listening. You heard all of them. You caused all of this. You killed them. He tugged against the restraints more. All for one side and moved closer. I thought after all this time you would learn. He put a hand over Izuku's face making him freeze I always get what I desire. Izuku's breathing had picked up considerably. Every time he did this it always ended up worse. He did it after Tenko was turned. After Taoya left. After his parents were killed. After he was given the order. He could feel burning white energy begin to flow through him. He knew what it was but he still wouldn't let it happen without a fight. With shaking hands he gripped onto the sleeve and lit his hands on fire, starting off as orange to blue to the blinding white flames he had used on muscular. He felt his feet leave the floor as his breathing became more rapid, the fire growing along with the energy, seeming to cause small bursts of pain on his face, neck, and arms. I won't. Listen, Izuku shouted. It seemed like the building around them shattered with the amount of power he was trying to force into Izuku. He could only focus on fighting it back, to try and not let it finish the process. He knew what happened to the people it finished destroying. Izuku, you are constantly surprising me. The energy got stronger as did the flames before it consumed them both. With a final burst of energy all for one was forced to let go as his hand was nearly burned off but you won't stay like that forever. Izuku landed on his knees. He could still feel the weird sensation on his face, neck, and arms but ignored it as he looked around. He could see Taoya, Tenko, Katsuki, and Himiko all looking at him with shock and worry. Passing one of the building walls he could see five figures. He recognized them and sighed with relief before he collapsed onto the ground. Izuku, Izu, Zuchin. The four ran over to Izuku. Tenko and Himiko slid next to him and looked him over while Bakugu and Taoya stood guard between all for one and Izuku. What did you do you piece of shit? Talia gritted out. He sent a small glance to Izuku. It didn't look good. He was in the old uniform, covered in bandages and bruises everywhere. But that wasn't the shocking part. The shocking part was the stark white hair that now sat on his head rather than the dark green they all knew in the now dark green scales. Some were scattered on his cheeks while more sat like an open collar on his neck and clumps of them on his arms, peeking through the bandages. You forced another quirk on him? Tenko shouted, blocking Izuku from the other's view while Himiko held onto him protectively. Come now Shigaraki. He will be your greatest weapon yet. Tenko growled and stood up. I never wanted a weapon. I didn't want this. Talia held an arm out to stop him. They all knew they didn't want to get too close to him. You will one day be great Shigaraki. That isn't my name. That was of course when the heroes arrived. Don't attack those three. They're with us. Aizawa called out as they all charged. Not wasting any time running over to them while All Might punched all for one away. The other heroes soon starting to fight the villains left. We need to leave. Himiko spoke determined. While All for One was distracted Talia picked Izuku up carefully while Himiko helped. They saw a portal begin to open until it disappeared. They looked over and saw Aizawa making sure they got out. We're two in the open. We need to go. Now, Taoya demanded as they began to move away from the fighting. Just as they ran a wall broke down as Ada, Kirishima, and Momo flew into the air. It looked like Momo had created a machine to propel herself into the air and give them more momentum. Bakugu. The teen looked up and smirked before using his quirk to fly up and get to them. Mount Lady using her body to block one of the villains from getting them. 
Taoya, and Miko. They looked over and saw Shouto and Shinsu waving them down. The three ran over and ducked into the alley, Shouto immediately grabbing onto Taoya as Shinsu took Izuku in his arms. I'm so sorry Shouto, I'll explain everything later, we need to go. Shouto nodded and led them away from the crowds and towards the school. What the hell happened? Shinsu asked as he looked at Izuku. The only reason he even recognized the teen was because of his wings. The white hair and scales threw him off though. That stupid piece of fucking shit forced another quirk on him. Tenko gritted out I don't know what it is but it just looks like scales. We need to get him to the school quickly if he really is hurt. There's a shortcut this way. Talia led them down another alley. They could see the gates finally as Izuku started whimpering a little we got you kid. Hold on a little longer. Are the others meeting us here? Shouto asked as they finally made it to the school. No, it was only supposed to be us three. He pointed to himself, Himiko, and Tenko not surprised Izuku followed after, but I really wish he hadn't. Good, you all made it. They saw Nenzu with Recovery Girl, ready to look them over. We have a problem. Shinsu ran up to Recovery Girl and showed her Izuku, she frowned before nodding. Follow me. Shinsu followed after, Shouto looked between his brother and Izuku for a moment. It's fine Shouto, we'll join you guys in a second. Shouto stared at him before nodding and running after them. I will keep this brief. Nenzu started walking into the school with the three following Taoya and Himika. You both will be exempt from anything as you were undercover. Shimura, sadly, you will have to talk to our detective and tell him everything that happened. Tenko flinched a little and looked down. Can I at least have someone with me? Nenzu nodded. Of course, whatever makes you more comfortable. With your statement and proof from both Taoya, Izuku, and what we could find you won't face any jail time for things that have happened. Tenko nodded. But he didn't think he deserved that. He had hurt and likely killed so many people. The memories were all foggy in the middle for him. He remembered a little after control was taken. And when Izuku started helping him break out was when he started remembering things. Shinsu and Shouto stood off to the side as Recovery Girl looked Izuku over. They helped her get him into different clothes so she could actually clean the wounds. They were slightly disgusted with the thought that someone else changed his clothes and wrapped his wounds. The cuts covering him weren't infected at least. The most worry was the one on his side. Recovery Girl seemed angered by the black veins on his chest that seemed to grow from last time. Are those? Shouto trailed off a little as they looked at his wrists. The skin around it was bruised and rubbed raw enough to still be bleeding a little. Shinsu glared and turned around, walking out of the room for the moment and punching the wall. It hurt but he needed it. Are you okay? He turned and saw Himiko looking a little worried but still had a smile. Peaky. Himiko laughed a little before grabbing his hand and forcing him to sit on the ground. What are you doing? I've seen two do this with Tenten. He lifted an eyebrow at the explanation so, tell me what's wrong. Shinsu sighed and looked at the ground. He broke out of there not even four years ago. Then he got back there and came back worse than before because I couldn't stop him. Himiko frowned a little. How would you have stopped him? Shinsu's eyes widened and he looked at her confused how would you have stopped an angry and determined Izuku. I haven't known him as long as the others or maybe even you. But two told me when he wanted to do something nothing would stop him. Especially when it comes to people he cares about. Himiko had a blinding smile. It must have been contagious as Shinsu soon had a small one. Yeah, he's amazing like that. Shinsu put his head in his hands for a minute he's powerful, sweet, kind, and literally everything else. I got bullied a little and turned into an antisocial asshole. Himiko frowned and slapped him on the back of his head oh. What the hell? Never compare trauma. She scolded him and he is. But he also has a lot of problems. We both know that. Shinsu nodded, seeming to finally calm down you like him don't you? What? Shinsu blushed as Himiko started laughing at him shut up. Himiko laughed more as Shouto came out. She's giving him a full body exam to make sure there isn't anything else she may have missed. He sat down next to Himiko, looking around for a moment is Taoya back yet? Him and Tenten are talking to Nedzu right now. They'll be done soon. She ruffled his hair a little making him smile a little. Is he doing any better? Shinsu asked hesitantly. Shouto stared at him for a moment before shrugging. I don't know. He made a few noises but didn't wake up. She thinks it might be the stress and his quirk putting him into a dormant mode to make space and energy for the new one. All three got a little dejected at that. They had all known they got to him a little too late, but they hoped he would make it out okay. Geez, you're all looking terrible. The group looked up as Taoya and Tenko walking over and joining them on the floor we miss something. Shinsu likes Izuku. Himiko blurted out before Shinsu tackled her. I said shut up. Himiko only laughed as Shinsu tried to attack her. Wait, you like him? Taoya asked a little shocked, though with a playful smirk on his lips. I said shut up. Izuku felt the pain before he actually woke up. It was like his quirk was thrumming under him wanting to escape. Izuku, sweetie, are you awake? He blinked a few times and felt his face before freezing. Running his hand along his neck and cheeks he felt his breathing pick up Izuku he blocked her out as he stood up and ran to the bathroom. Looking in the mirror he froze again. He let one of his hands run over the cold green scales on his neck. 
They covered some of the bruising from when he was choked. His other hand went to his hair and tugged on it lightly. He jumped a little when he felt the scales shift with his movements. He looked to his arms and stared at the scales as they grouped together before dispersing. Izu, he whipped around seeing Tenko in the doorway staring at him are you okay? He stared at the other before looking in the mirror. He touched it lightly and brought the other back to his hair can you talk? Izuku turned back around to him and shifted the scales on his neck to show the large bruises around his throat. I think he stopped moving his hands for a second and stared at them I don't know Tenko nodded. Can you go back to the bed so recovery girl can look you over? Izuku looked a little nervous I'll be right there with you okay. No one's leaving you alone. Izuku stared, trying to see a lie but there wasn't one. I'm sorry. His voice was rough and it hurt, but he wanted to say it. You have nothing to be sorry for Izu. I just want you to be okay. Izuku nodded. Tenko turned to walk back into the nurse's office but paused when he felt something grab onto his sleeve. He looked to Izuku who had stepped closer and was holding onto his arm. Tenko laid a hand over Izuku's as they walked back to the bed. You had lacerations all over and a nasty wound on your side. Other than that and some bruising you are okay, physically, recovery girl explained. Izuku looked at her a little confused and tapped on his head that's called Marie Antoinette syndrome. It turned white from the stress you suffered. He tugged on it a little with a frown having white hair isn't so bad, but don't listen to this old lady. Izuku smiled a little at recovery girl trying to comfort him in her own way. I think it looks nice. He turned to Tenko who shrugged now we match a little, same with Taoya and Yuri. Izuku smiled before offering a hand. Tenko looked at him weirdly until Izuku pulled him into a hug wrapping his wings around the other. Sorry, missed you. Tenko chuckled and wrapped his arms around the other in a tight embrace and pet the other's hair. Missed you too, Izu. Izuku sat in the bed wide awake and looked out the window. He could see the others laying around him but he couldn't feel them. Recovery girl had mentioned that his senses would be dulled for a while due to the stress his body endured, but he didn't think it was that. He could still hear their heartbeats clear as day and he could see the birds a mile away. He felt disconnected from everything, like he wasn't really there. He thinks he heard Hound Dog mention something similar before, but he couldn't remember what it was called. Izuku. He jumped a little at the voice and turned, seeing Shinsu stand by the door with a small frown. He looked to the others around and slowly crawled out of the bed and padded his way into the hallway with Shinsu closing the door. Is everything alright? Izuku signed. Shinsu looked at him a little shocked. I should be asking you that. You just went back there, and now you're back with another forced quirk. Izuku rubbed at the scales on his neck a little nervously not that having a new one is bad. Unless it is. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do in this situation honestly dot just dot do you want to talk about it? Izuku let out a small laugh. I think you're doing okay. Izuku looked to the door. Everyone was still asleep from what he could tell let's talk somewhere else. How about that cat cafe? The one where we and no actually met. Izuku smiled a little and nodded as the two left the school making sure to let Nezu and Recovery Girl know that they were leaving the school. The walk to the cafe was silent. They paid for a three-hour visit at the cafe and had gotten coffee and hot cocoa. Always the cat magnet. Shinsu joked as another cat laid down on Izuku's lap. He had at least two on each leg, one laying across his shoulders and a kitten in his hair. They liked the heat. Izuku whispered, his throat still bruised from the incident. Shinsu nodded a little as he took the kitten off of Izuku's head and looked at it. It was missing an eye. Poor thing, wonder what happened. Izuku took the kitten back and held it close to its chest. Think your dad will let you adopt him? Shinsu asked as the kitten cuddled closer to Izuku. What do you mean? Shinsu stared at him for a second before face palming. Sorry, figured you knew. Cat cafes usually bring in rescues to be adopted. Figured we could ask Aizawa-sensei if we could adopt the kitten. Then you could have a little friend. Izuku looked at the kitten and smiled. It was a small Maine Coon with black and white fur. Obviously larger than a normal kitten but still small. I don't think he'll mind. He let the cat continue to rest against his chest as they dipped into another silence. Do dot do you want to talk about it? Izuku looked up to Shinsu who looked awkward but worried we when we were there we could hear you yelling. It felt awful just hearing it. But it was happening to you. Izuku looked at the cat on his chest before scooting over to Shinsu. I just want to rest for a while. He leaned against Shinsu who moved so that Izuku could lay against his chest, letting the cats lay on and around them. I can help with that. Izuku laughed a little as he cuddled the main coon closer. Tenko woke up around noon a little confused. He had expected Izuku to still be there after the day he had but only Aizawa and Himiko were still there. Tenten. Himiko tackled him into a hug with a smile. Good to see you're awake. Tenko looked to Aizawa and nodded the detective is on campus right now. We know you want someone else here with Tayu. If you want to wait for Izuku or Taoya then Tenko shook his head. No, I don't really want them hearing about it. He looked at Himiko hesitantly would you stay? She nodded happily and didn't release the hug. Always, he smiled and hugged her back. I'm ready. Aizawa nodded and left the room, letting Tenko wake up more and for Himiko to calm him down at least a little. Why didn't you want Izu or two? 
Himiko asked curiously. She loved hanging out with Tenko, but the other three were a lot closer. I didn't want them hearing what they couldn't protect me from. He looked down sadly as he spoke when we were there I should have been protecting Izuku. He was so young and scared and I did nothing. All I did was cry with him until he finally stopped, forcing him and Taya to protect me while they were always hurt. Himiko frowned a little and wrapped him in a hug. I doubt they see it that way, Tenton, but I'm here for you. He smiled at her before nodding his head. Maybe now he could repay them for everything they did. Are you ready to talk Tenko? Remember, take your time, we can always take breaks. The detective reminded him as they sat in the chairs. I'm ready just promise that Taoya and Izu never hear about all this okay. I don't want them protecting me anymore. The detective nodded while Aizawa watched him curiously. Of course, first question, how long were you there? Shouto and Taoya walked around the courtyard in silence. Taoya could tell that Shouto had a hundred and one questions but wasn't sure how to ask him. You know, usually when people have questions they speak up. Shouto blushed a little and nudged Taoya in the side. It's fine if you ask some weird questions, I'll answer them. Why did you leave? He of course knew that was going to be the first question. He knew leaving had hurt his brother more than it was meant to when they planned it out. We knew Tenko was breaking out of mind control, but it was hard to try and help him from the outside. We also knew they were planning something for you guys. If they had people on the inside they could prepare for it and help with little collateral damage. But why didn't you just tell us? Taoya sighed. He wanted to punch the principal in that moment. He swore the little rat liked all the drama. Medzu thought it could ruin it if you knew. You might accidentally blow our cover or something. I don't know. He turned to Shouto and grabbed him by the shoulders I didn't want to leave you. You, Mom, Natsuo, Fayumi, you all are my lifeline. I wanted to tell you so bad. To assure you that nothing was actually wrong. That we were safe. But I couldn't. Shouto stared at him in shock before dragging him into a hug. I'm so glad you're back. Taoya smiled and hugged him back. Missed you too brat. We never actually asked if we could adopt him did we? Shinsu asked as they walked back into the school. All they had done was tell Nedzu who supplied the funds. Nope. He held the kitten up by its armpits and showed Shinsu now were cat parents though. Shinsu smiled and patted the cat's head. What are we naming her anyway? Izuku looked at the cat before putting it back on his shoulders. How about Yin? Like the black side of a Yin Yang. Sounds good. Sure the others will love her. They made it to the nurse's office and could hear quiet crying. Looking in Izuku could see Aizawa, Himiko, and Tenko on the bed. He slowly opened the door, getting their attention. Tenko looked up from Aizawa's chest in confusion as Izuku walked over and showed him the cat. We're parents now. It was silent for a moment. What? At that Himiko and Shinsu broke down laughing while Tenko looked utterly confused. This is Yin. Me and Hitoshi adopted her. Tenko stared for a second before slowly picking up the cat. He was glad the school gave him gloves that cancelled out his quirk. Please tell me Nedzu let you. Aizawa sighed out as he rubbed his forehead. Yep, he gave us the money for her. Aizawa just nodded, too tired and stressed to deal with it. Is that a kitty? Iri yelled as she and Kouter ran into the room, getting on Himiko and Tenko's lap to look at the kitty. We leave for ten minutes and now you have a cat. Shouto seemed just as interested and joined the others on the bed to play with the cat. Yeah, we actually have a mortgage too. We figured it was time to grow up. Taoya rolled his eyes as Shinsu talked, though Izuku only smiled. He was glad to have most of his family here with him at least. Izuku sat in the common room drawing in a notebook. Hound Dog had suggested it when they talked, a way to get his thoughts out and process things. Move over, Izuku looked up to Taoya and scooted from the middle of the couch to the armrest. The older sat down and turned on the TV to a random channel with cartoons to watch what he got there. He leaned over slightly to look at the drawing. I'm trying to draw eyes. He explained quickly, feeling his wings wrap around him a little in embarrassment. He didn't think they were the best but he was trying at least. Nice dot 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 are those Shinsu's eyes. Izuku felt heat rush to his face as he used his wings to hide himself all. The baby bird has a crush Taoya sang with a smile. Shut up. Izuku gritted out trying to hide from the other. Izu has a crush. Himiko shouted running into the room. Izuku glared at Taoya. I hate you. Who is it? Himiko asked, bouncing on her feet as she grabbed Izuku's face. It's eyebags, Taoya said with a smirk, knowing Izuku wouldn't say. The teen only blushed more and tried to sink into the couch. He felt soft fur against his leg and picked up Yin who curled in his lap immediately and look at that, you already have children with him. Shut up. Taoya only laughed before nudging him with his foot. I think it's cute. You're both so sweet to each other. Izuku rolled his eyes and hid his face in Yin's fur. What are you talking about? Tenko asked, walking in with a bag of clothes and Midnight not far behind him. Izu has a crush on Shinu Midnight gasped and grabbed her phone. I have to tell Hizashi and Shouta. They'll be so happy. Izuku glared at her. No, he groaned out. He didn't need his dad's messing with him over this. I think it's nice. Tenko set the bags down and joined them on the couch. He's a nice guy and treats you well. You deserve someone like that. Izuku kicked him in the ribs oh. I'm trying to be nice. Stop it. 
Talia and Himiko started laughing before the door burst open. My baby has a crush. Suddenly Izuku was dragged into a bone-crushing hug making him drop Yin who scratched at Hisashi's foot I'm so proud of you. But this means we have to have the talk. Hisashi sat him down and grabbed his shoulders now listen Izuku when a man and a man love each other very much Izuku cut him off by hitting Hisashi with his wings. Pops, I know what sex is. His face was bright red as the others laughed at him. Why'd you stop him? I wanted to see how far he'd go. Mimuri yelled with a sigh. I am not getting the talk again. Izuku glared at her while the others tried to calm down. Young Izuku. They turned to All Might who had burst through the doors midnight has told us of your interest. Now when a man. Oh my god. Aizawa and Nezu had already explained to the group how it was going to go. The students were going to move into the dorm buildings and since class A and B were the only ones to ever actually interact with them they would explain everything and apologize. If anyone had a problem with them also being there they would be in a different building. Then they could tell the teachers and would try to find a way to help fix it. Be ready, Aizawa asked, looking at Taoya, Himiko, and Tenko. Might as well be. They were all in casual clothes, the boys being in sweats while Himiko was in a crop top and skirt. Yep. Himiko was the one to lead them out to the students. Everyone was silent as they walked out. The group that had gotten Bakugu and Izuku out already knew everything but the others looked shocked and some even scared. This is Himiko Toga, Tenko Shimura, and Taoya. The oldest had made it clear he wanted to change his last name. Taoya and Himiko were working with us the entire time to help keep damage and injuries to a minimum while also giving us information. Tenko was held captive with Izuku and Taoya before being mind-controlled. He was never in charge of his actions. Izuku felt some of the students' eyes on him as he stared forward. They will be staying in a different building but will have free reign of the dorm areas. If anyone has a problem please tell us now. Everyone stood staring at them. There were a few whispers but no one else said anything. Bakugo was the first to move. Shouto and Shinsu not far behind. You look like a homeless man. Taoya glared at Bakugo before punching him in the shoulder. And you look like a prissy bitch. Oh wait. That got the Baka squad to burst out laughing. Shinsu nodded to them before going into the building, others soon following and waving to them as they went. Himiko stopped Su and Yuraka before they could enter though. I'm really sorry if I hurt you at the camp. I couldn't blow my cover but I didn't want to actually put you in danger. I hope you can forgive me. She bowed to them and squeezed her eyes shut. The two girls looked at each other before smiling. We forgive you. She looked shocked as Yuraka spoke. You were helping so we understand, Kiro. Himiko smiled widely and bounced on her feet. Thank you so much. She pulled them into a quick hug since I'm here though can we be friends? The two girls nodded before Izuku walked up to them. She thinks you're both pretty. The three girls blushed while Himiko glared. Izu, payback. He shouted back as Tenko followed him into the dorms laughing. It was surprisingly easy for the students to get along with the ex-villains. There were moments where the teachers worried but it was easily solved or it was the teens messing around. You fucking bitch. Midnight jumped at the screaming. Not as used to it as Aizawa was. She went around the corner and saw Bakugu holding Tenko by his collar. I should fucking kill you asshole. She was about to stop them, worried they were actually fighting. Bekubro. It's just Uno. She looked to the table to see Taoya, Denki, Siro, and Mina laughing while Kirishima sighed with a smile. And he placed a draw for. Look at my fucking hand shitty hair. He deserves the goddamn death penalty. She smiled before going back to making lunch. Shinsu stumbled down to the common room quietly, not wanting to wake anyone else up at around 4 a.m., even if it was the weekend. He made it to the kitchen, not bothering with the light, and opened the fridge. The light on the inside lit up the room as he looked around for something to eat or drink. He grabbed water and paused when he saw something gray out of the corner of his eye, slowly turning his head. He jumped when he was met with glowing eyes and slammed the door shut. Sorry. He tried to calm down from the heart attack as he heard Izuku talk I forgot to turn the lights on. He heard the other move over before the lights were flipped on. Why were you sitting in the dark? Shinsu asked, confused. Izuku rubbed the back of his neck awkwardly. My eyes automatically adjust to night vision if it's dark. I forgot to turn the lights on and when you walked in I just assumed you were too tired to notice me. Izuku shifted a little why are you awake anyway? It doesn't look like you've slept yet. Shinsu huffed a little and picked his water bottle back up. I was trying to but just couldn't. Insomnia comes with the quirk. He set it on the counter and stretched a little why are you awake? Well dot um. Izuku blushed as his wings curled around him I have trouble sleeping alone sometimes. It um dot it reminds me of when Talia and Tenko were gone I guess. And when I was alone. They stood there silently for a moment. Letting the words sink in before Shinsu spoke. Would it be easier if someone was there? He asked hesitantly. I mean probably. But I don't want to bother anyone or Shinsu cut him off with a shrug. Well I'm already awake. Izuku looked at him shocked. And I wouldn't mind. I mean we cuddled at the cat cafe and you seemed pretty happy with that. Izuku felt his face get warmer as he spoke. I am dot as long as you don't mind. I mean I. Yeah if it's okay. 
Shinsu laughed a little as the other tripped over his words. Yeah it's alright. Do you want to go to your room? It'll probably be more comfortable. Yes please. Shinsu followed Izuku back to his room. It was right next door to him so they were wall neighbors. When Izuku opened the door he was shocked. The room was covered in a soft yellow glow from fairy lights hanging on the ceiling in the shape of fireflies. There was a plush-looking black couch on one side of the wall with a few beanbag chairs and soft fuzzy blankets on the ground. The bed was covered in blankets and pillows in a nest-like shape with a large stuffed bunny on the edge where Yin was sleeping. Wow, he let his eyes roam while Izuku walked in. This place looks like a tired teen's wet dream. Izuku turned to him with a playful glare. Do not call it that. Shinsu laughed as the two walked over to the bed, laying down and facing each other. It was silent as they stared at each other, mapping their faces in the soft light like they could imprint it into their brains. Shinsu lifted a hand and laid it in Izuku's hair. Your hair is really nice. Izuku blushed but leaned into the touch wish you could have gotten it a better way. Izuku hummed and scooted closer, burying himself in the other's chest and relaxing. He felt the other move his arm under Izuku's head like a pillow. You're warm dot it's nice. Shinsu stopped moving his hand in Izuku's hair before speaking. Don't you have a fire quirk? Izuku used his foot to kick the other who laughed again. That's not what I meant. Shinsu let his hand fall away and rest on Izuku's waist. Well I'm glad I can be warm for you then dot you're warm for me too dot and not because of your quirk. Izuku huffed and kicked the other again before closing his eyes good night Izuku. Good night Hitoshi. Surprisingly the group of ex-villains and hero students got along and lived together easily. They all found groups they liked to hang out with. For example Tenko and Taoya hung out with the Baka squad the most. Himiko hung out with the girls or the Amos, and all of them hung out with the Izakru. However one thing they couldn't all get used to as easily was the group being downstairs in the middle of the night. It had started off with just Izuku being awake, then Tenko, then Taoya and Himiko, then Shinsu joined them one night and became a permanent add-on to the group. No, I'm just saying that if you didn't want to get kidnapped, maybe you shouldn't have been such a little bitch, Shinsu said, not even looking up from the meme he was showing to Izuku, who was curled up into his side with Yin laying on them. Yeah well if you didn't want to get bullied don't be an asshole. Tenko kicked his leg at the other who laughed. Can Keigo join us? The group looked to Izuku who was reading off his phone he said he was supposed to join the league as a spy and feels like since he read your files you have to be friends now so it isn't weird. That still makes it weird. Talia pointed out. But no one said no. I'm taking that as a yes. He texted the hero back before putting his phone on the table and wrapping an arm around Shinsu's waist to get comfortable. Why does he sleep so much? Himiko asked, confused. Most of the class grew used to him sleeping as much as Aizawa or even more at this point. Doc said it's due to the trauma and his quirk. He's almost never actually asleep, just relaxed enough to seem asleep, but ready to fight in a second's notice. So if he doesn't sleep he has to relax a lot more for his body to regain energy. Shinsu explained as he moved his free hand to run through the white locks. Nice. Izuku opened his eyes and stared at Tenko for a minute who only shrugged his shoulders. Wow he's a lot clingier than I thought. They all turned to see Hawks walking through the door with bags sup, I brought food. He set them on the table as Tenko stood up. Welp, you're already my best friend. He took a bag of chips and went back to the floor between Taoya's legs. I forget how easy your love is to buy. Taoya pointed out while getting a bag of Skittles. He gestured with his other hand for Keigo to join them on the main couch. He smiled and sat down next to Taoya, immediately moving to lay sideways and rest on his lap. What the hell are you doing? Something, something, birds are clingy, you're warm, blah blah blah, shut up and eat your skittles. Taoya stared at him in shock while Shinsu, Himiko, and Tenko tried not to wake the others up. Oh I like this one, he's our best friend now. Himiko declared with a large smile. Keigo and her fist bumped as she made room for herself on the couch somehow. That's it, Tenko and Izuku are the only one with manners. Tenko smirked before standing up, moving Keigo's head, and sitting on his lap before letting Keigo lay back down I take it back. Izuku's the only one I like, you're all garbage. When Aizawa woke up that morning, he expected a lot of things. He expected to have his coffee, his husband already awake at work, and for there to be a few emails to look at before watching the children to get around. He however was not expecting this. Would someone like to explain why there are six of you on one couch instead of spread out and why the number two hero is also here? The group looked up to Aizawa. All of them either had drinks, food, or someone else in their hands. We always do this, Izuku spoke up, finally opening his eyes after all that time. He had been talking but it was barely above a whisper Keigo got jealous so we invited him over. Aizawa only stared at him for a moment before sigh. Fine, but if I get an angry phone call about the number two hero missing I'm not dealing with it. He turned away from them and went to the kitchen. Thanks Eraser. He rolled his eyes with a slight smile, already hearing Ada, Momo, Bakugu, and Aoyama getting up. What the actual fuck? And Bakugu was now downstairs, likely to start breakfast for everyone what is even happening right now. Bonding. 
he heard Kago answer hesitantly, though it seemed enough for warning Bakugu to accept as he walks into the kitchen. I'm making fucking waffles. If you don't want any get the hell out. Aizawa gave a small wave as he sat on the island with a cup of coffee. Why is there a giant bird in the living room? He was lonely. Bakugu stared at him before sighing and turning to the stove. I hate this fucking family. Bakugu watched the large group hang out in the living room with a glare. Don't get him wrong. He didn't hate the ex-villains. He actually got along with them really well, but he was angry with Izuku. He knew the other could feel eyes on him, but he hadn't moved yet. I'm leaving. Bakugu stood up suddenly, accidentally shoving Mina off him. He looked back to her in apology, but she didn't even seem to notice Sachin. He left the room, not even having to check that Izuku was following him. They kept walking till they were in a training area. Bakugu finally turned around to see Izuku wearing a long-sleeved black shirt with grey sweats, his wings fluttering flighty behind him. Is everything okay Kaken? The blonde was silent as Izuku spoke we haven't really talked since you were kidnapped. Everyone seems to forget about you in that situation. Izuku fell silent at the words, trying to understand what he meant. Kaken I don't. Of course you don't understand. Bakugu ran a hand over his face you haven't even after our first fucking fight with All Might. You still keep pulling this shit. Izuku felt his wings pull back as the other shouted you. You keep jumping into this shit with no regard for yourself. The winged teen felt himself stiff before feeling angry. No regard for myself. How could I? Kaken I almost lost you. I almost lost you to the people that dot 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 that did that to me. Small flames danced around his feet. Except you didn't. The heroes already had a plan. Our friends already had a plan. Bakugu ignored them as he shoved a finger at Izuku's chest. You think you have to save everyone else by yourself. That's not what happened. I didn't know. He tried to defend himself, but even All Might could have argued against it. But you didn't think. You ignored everything and followed after when you should have stayed the hell away. Bakugu felt his palms flare up before aiming at Izuku. You shouldn't have even been away from us. His wings flared out behind him before taking off into the sky. Bakugu wasn't far behind, using his quirk to propel himself after the other. When they came face to face Izuku spun and wrapped one of his arms around Bakugu's waist before letting them free fall. Bakugu broke away and kicked the other in the stomach, sending him to the ground. If we're going to fight don't go easy on me for some stupid fucking reason. Izuku stood up and took in a few breaths with a glare. You want to fight? Fine. Izuku let flames wrap around his arms as his wings disappeared. Running forward he aimed for the other, making the flames cool down when they got close to Bakugu, not wanting to burn him, but wanting it to still hurt. The blonde growled and let his sweat drip into the fire, making it explode by Izuku's face, who flinched back and put out the fires. Bakugu took the chance and grabbed the other by his arm and shoulder, throwing him to the ground again. What the fuck did I say? Izuku stood up again. Letting the flames disappear completely, it quickly became dark around them, the green-haired teen letting his quirk take over. Oh I remember, he used the darkness to his advantage and tackled the other, putting him in a chokehold I was just testing the waters. Bakugu choked a little before letting an explosive out on Izuku's stomach, who recoiled before trying to tackle him again. The two quickly devolved into dodging and grabbing, neither able to get a solid hold on the other. Izuku grabbed Bakugu's arm and twisted, turning a little before wrapping his legs around the other's waist and letting his wings appear, shooting them into the air. Bakugu tried to break free again but Izuku used his fire to stop him before letting the other go. Letting his wings disappear again he slammed his feet into the other's stomach, making them crash to the ground. Izuku took the chance and pinned the other to the ground. Why do we have to fight every time you want to talk? Izuku whispered just talk to me. Please. Bakugu stared at him. You were there for almost 10 years. Izuku slowly let him go, both of them sitting on the ground with no hope of escape, trying to take care of other kids, and being experimented on. He nodded so why dot 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 so why was I so scared? Why did my fear hurt you and all might? Kakin that's not what. It is though. The blonde had tears running down his face you followed after me to fucking save me. And look at you. Izuku smiled sadly look at fucking all might. Katsuki. The other stopped, not used to the name it's not your fault, look at me. The blonde looked up all for one has been planning this for years. As soon as I escaped he was coming up with ways to get me back. When All Might first fought him he was finding ways to kill him, it's not your fault for getting caught in the crossfire. But he used Izuku cut him off again. He would have used someone else too, probably Tenko. But they wanted you to be a villain, which you aren't, the goals happened to align, you did nothing. Why can't I talk about emotions like a normal person? That got a laugh out of both of them. I really wish he would for once. Both jumped to see All Might and Aizawa standing there it's less paperwork for me. But Izuku is right. Young Bakugu, the teacher pulled him into a hug. It isn't your fault. The teen held onto him tightly as his shoulder shook. Let's let them talk and get you fixed up. Aizawa helped Izuku up as All Might whispered to Bakugu. Are we in trouble? Izuku asked quietly as they walked. Not exactly dot 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 it seems like you two need more time than the rest. 
You'll be excluded from classes the next three days. You'll do the chores and everything. But dot 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 and oh, you aren't in trouble. Izuku smiled and hugged the older man. Thanks dad. Izuku personally didn't see missing class and having to clean as punishment. But Bakugu sure did. This is such bullshit. He angrily swept the kitchen no one else fucking cleans anyway. Well aren't you all sunshine and rainbows? Taoya laughed as Bakugu glared at him. Here's the rest of the trash Izu. Don't fucking help handy man. It had been hard for Bakugu specifically the last few days. Apparently Aizawa had told the class that they weren't allowed to know what was going on. Not that Izuku minded. It was a good break to finally finish settling into the dorms and getting the others fully situated. The only difference he felt, going from living in the school to the dorms, was that all of his friends and family were nearby. It allowed his quirk to settle down. Knowing if he needed to protect them or make sure they were okay all he had to do was knock on a door or go down the hall. Now that everyone's here, Aizawa walked to the front of the class it's time we talk about your next challenge. The room was eerily silent as they waited for him to finish the provisional license exam. It has a 50% pass rate, which is why it's important you start working on ultimate moves. On cue midnight, Cementos and Ectoplasma walked into the room. Izuku looked to his dad, already assuming it was something similar to when they chose hero names. Everyone change into your hero costumes and follow us. Izuku shifted a little. He looked around at everyone else as they entered the new area. Welcome to the training dining land or TDL. Aizawa waved his hand a little, ignoring the confused looks of the students as they enter. I envisioned the TDL. With the foundation being cement I have control over it so I can make specific adjustments for each student. Cementos explained. Ader raised his hand, waiting to be called on. What importance does ultimate moves serve for the test? There are many facets to being a hero, combat being one of them. Exactly. Midnight took over, letting Aizawa go to the corner of the room. Combat is important in a fight. Ultimate moves are something you can practice and use in a battle to get the upper hand. It's important to have a move you can always use. Actually Ada your recipro burst could be classified as one. Ectoplasm pointed out, making the team brighten up a little. You'll be spending the rest of summer working on your moves by fighting my clones. I suggest you also look into costume upgrades. After the class was sent their separate ways to train, Izuku stood off to the side, trying to think of what he could work on. He looked down at his costume before feeling his face a little. One thing he knew he wanted to change was the amount of clothing that covered him. Everything alright young Izuku. He turned to All Might, not noticing when the teacher had joined them. I was thinking of costume changes. He tugged his jacket off, showing the scales that still sat on his skin I still haven't quite figured these out yet. As he stared at his arms they began to shift, making him jump and lower his arms I don't really know how this new quirk works. HM, perhaps ask young Kirishima. He may be able to help. Izuku nodded and went to go find the other team. Anjiro, the redhead looked over and waved. Hey Izumbro, what's up? Your quirk allows you to harden parts of your body right. Kirishima nodded with a smile do you think you could help me with these? He showed the scales on his arm, face, and neck. HM. Maybe. Let's see. Kirishima showed his own arms usually. I don't think about it when I harden. It's an instinct to protect myself or use it as a weapon. Izuku hummed, moving his arms around a little. Okay, can you attack me? Kirishima seemed hesitant but ultimately agreed. They both got into fighting stances with Izuku making his wings disappear and trying to use instinct alone. The hits weren't hitting very hard but it seemed to have the desired effect. A few of the scales moving to protect parts of his arm that Kirishima aimed at. Seems like you have a pretty good handle. Kirishima complimented after they stopped might have something to do with how well trained you are. Thanks Ijiro, I'll let you work. Izuku went back to his spot, picking up his jacket again and messed with it. Thinking of moves, he turned and smiled at Shinsu. Not exactly, I think I'm gonna change my costume again. The other teen nodded, sitting next to him. You and I both, still trying to think of ideas for moves, can't really have ultimate moves if I don't have a physical quirk. Izuku nudged him a little, letting his wings flare out some. You'll come up with something amazing, you always do, Shinsu rolled his eyes. We can go to the support course tomorrow, get some ideas from Mei. Sounds like a plan, but we should probably spar or something before Aizawa-sensei hurts us. Izuku waved as he stood up, helping Shinsu up so they could spar and come up with ideas and plans. By the next day Izuku and Shinsu headed to the support course. Oh, hey guys. They looked over to Ida and Yuraka, also heading there. Hey guys, getting upgrades? Shinsu asked, taking the lead in the conversation. I'm hoping they can supply me with something to cool my radiators. Ida declared. Yuraka laughed a little. I'm seeing if they have something to reduce my nausea. Izuku nodded in understanding until he stopped, looking at the door. Get down. He pushed the others out of the way before catching Mei and shielding her from debris. Izuku, good to see you. She hugged him tightly, making him blush a little before letting go and the rest of you people. She had forgotten their names. Hi Mei. Shinsu only waved while Yuraka introduced herself. How could you forget me? 
You used me as an advertisement. It was silent for a moment before Mei turned away. Don't remember. Shinsu patted Ida on the back. It's okay, there are other fish in the sea. Ida began reprimanding him as they entered the room. We actually came here for upgrades, Izuku said, knowing it would get Mei interested. Power Loader invited them in while Mei began to harass Uraraka and Ida. What can I help you with? Shinsu shrugged, watching Mei give the other two more and more ridiculous things. I was looking for a small change. Izuku set his case down with the new quirk I need to expose those parts of my arms and neck. I was wondering if we could just cut some of the pieces off. Sure thing Izuku, should be able to pick it up tomorrow, sounds good. Izuku nodded, turning back to his friends and seeing it on the ceiling. I really don't want to know. Izuku flew up and helped the other teen down slowly. I could use your chaos Hatsume, how does this look? Shinsu handed her a piece of paper. The girl read it over before screaming. This just became my top priority. I'll have it done at SAP Brainy. The next day Izuku tried on his new costume. There wasn't much of a change though. He noticed that the shirt had been changed to a tank top, allowing his arms more freedom but not much else. When he asked Power Loader explained that the jacket was now a type of fabric that could fix itself like midnights. It would allow him to use the scales as a defense without worrying about his costume. Any ideas yet? Aizawa asked, seeing Izuku stare at his hands again. Not really. Usually when I fight I'm not thinking of my own moves. I'm thinking of my opponents and acting like that. You're always on the defensive, waiting for the next attack. Izuku nodded well then think of a move that could take someone out right away, like the white fire thing. What white fire? Aizawa paused and stared at him. Are you serious? Izuku nodded Izuku you've used it twice now, against muscular and all for one. I don't really remember those parts. That's worrying. Aizawa sighed all right you use blue fire a lot right. How about we have one of the clones act as a practice dummy and you try to turn it white? It'll be a start for now but I want you to talk to Hound Dog about the memory loss. Okay, thanks dad. Aizawa nodded and went to help the other students. I stole your dad's look. Izuku looked at Shinsu before laughing a little. I think I wear it better though. The mask really ties it all together. It does? What does it do? Izuku asked, carefully taking the large mouthpiece. It lets me change and throw my voice. If I sound like someone else people will be more likely to answer, Shinsu explained, hitting a few buttons before speaking into it see. When he spoke it sounded deeper and further away. That's really cool Hitoshi. Maybe Izuku was cut off as they heard someone shout. Look out. The two moved right away. Shinsu used his capture weapon to grab All Might and drag him out of the way while Izuku used his wing blades to shatter the rock before landing and using his scales to stop the debris. Are you okay? Shinsu asked, helping the teacher up. Yes of course. You both were amazing. Very quick thinking. You'll be great heroes. The two practically glowed under the praise, both soon going back to training and working on their moves. Think of a move yet. Izuku looked at Tenko who was leaning in the doorway. Not quite in Izuku's room yet. Not really. He scooted closer to the wall, patting the space and waiting for Tenko to sit down. Dad mentioned something about white fire, but I haven't really been able to use it. You mean that thing you used against him? It was pretty intense. Felt really hot too. Yeah. Izuku scribbled on the page. Not exactly drawing anything other than random circles Shadow said I could use the fire ring as an ultimate move too if I wanted. When Tenko gave him a weird look he explained I create a ring of fire, but it doesn't actually burn anyone, just makes them back off. Doesn't sound as flashy as white fire. The teen kicked him in the leg before looking back at the paper. I don't know what to do. Dot Dad said this stuff can be important for heroes, but I can't think of anything. Can't think of what? Katsuki stomped into the room, physically shoving Tenko over to sit on the bed a place to put this rat. Shut up. Tenko shoved him back, both of them readjusting to get comfortable. Ultimate moves. I saw some of your ideas. They looked cool. Some of them were our ideas when we were kids. Why not just do one of those? Katsuki suggested, leaning back against the bed and letting his head hang off the edge. Most of those were if I could breathe fire or lift things with my mind. So, Izuku nudged him a bit I'm being serious. The teen sighed and leaned over his bed, reaching under and pulling out a small box. Mitsuki and Masaru had given it to him after they had reunited. It held a lot of his old stuff they held onto in case he was ever found. He dug through it for a minute before pulling out an old notebook labeled Ideas for the Future. Though some of the words were a little misspelled, he flipped through it before finding the page Katsuki had been referencing. It held different ideas for both of them, though Izuku's had been more vague since he didn't have a quirk at the time. Fire Sphere Tenko looked over his shoulder, reading off of the list what the hell is that? If I was able to breathe fire then I would just shoot it around me to create a sphere of some kind that would either push people away or destroy debris. Could do that one, Katsuki suggested. Now tossing a random ball up and down. It might work. I would have control over it so it'd probably just be a more complicated ring of fire. What about that one? Izuku squinted at the words for a moment. See did I name a move collateral damage? The other two burst out laughing what was that even for? 
It was, oh fuck, Katsuki paused and caught his breath it was you controlling broken shit on the ground. Why did we name it collateral damage? I like that name, sounds bad. They both rolled their eyes at Tenko who only shrugged. What about Hellfire? That sounds cool. I would shoot my fire into the ground so it would seep through cracks. That's actually a better idea for my quirk now. He grabbed a different notebook and wrote it down. I've done something similar with the beasts in the forest and muscular. I send fire through the cracks of things to burn it. Katsuki sat up quickly, almost falling over. Could work with metals too. If you're in the building you could stabilize it quick enough to get everyone out. Izuku nodded along, adding it to the notebook along with the fire sphere. What about one for your wings? Tenko asked, leaning against the other also if your hero name is Seraph I say stick with the heaven and hell thing, hellfire goes hard. It goes what? The other only shrugged. I don't know. It was something Denki was telling me about. Things go hard or go crazy. Stick with go crazy because you're absolutely batshit. Tenko kicked Katsuki, making the blonde fall off the bed asshole. What about Heaven's Blade for when I use the wing blades? Izuku suggested, his wings shifting a little behind him to stretch out sticks with the angel thing. Sounds fucking awesome. Gonna do one for your scales. Izuku looked down at his arms and shrugged. It's not like Ijiro's quirk. It just kinda acts like a shield, can't use it to attack or anything. It'd be fucking cool if you could though. Katsuki climbed back onto the bed just send out little scales and cut a bitch up. When they returned to the TDL Izuku spread out from the rest just in case his fire got out of control. He could see Aizawa watching him carefully, likely ready to turn Izuku's quirk off if needed. He let the ectoplasm clones push random debris off of a ledge towards him. He took a moment before twisting and throwing fire from his legs. The movement created waves of flames that seemed to build against each other before bursting and destroying the rocks. What do you plan on calling that? Aizawa asked, still staying slightly away from the team. Fire Sphere. Kakan reminded me of the notebook I used to keep with ideas for attacks. Any other ideas? Yeah, he waved for the clones to do it again. This time he flew close and used the blades to cut through the stone. When he landed he stretched his wings out, showing there was no damage we thought about calling that one heaven's blade. Not bad. I really like this one though. He went to the edge of the cliff and stuck his hand into a crack hellfire as soon as he spoke. Blue fire quickly creeped up the cliff before exploding out of the top and forcing the clones back something like that anyway. Good. That one can be versatile. You could use it to guide victims to safety and natural disasters or keep others warm. He patted Izuku on the head keep working, you're doing good. Izuku. He turned to see Shinsu running over can you help me test this move out? Sure, what do you need me to do? Just stand there and get ready to attack me dot and don't use survive. Izuku nodded, letting Shinsu get in a fighting stance across from him. The two watched each other for a moment before Shinsu ran forward. Izuku raised his hands, ready to attack when Shinsu suddenly threw smoke bombs down covering the area in a haze. He tried to stop himself from using infrared like Shinsu had asked, but the smoke made it difficult. Over here, Izuku turned to his left, unable to see a body in the fog no here. He turned to his right, still unable to see anyone wrong. This time the voice came from behind him still wrong. Shinsu appeared behind him and grabbed the teen's arm, kicking his legs out before pinning him. The smoke slowly cleared, showing Izuku on his back with Shinsu hovering over him. What do you think? That's amazing Hitoshi. The teen moved his mask, showing off a small smile as he stood up and helped Izuku off of the ground though I'm not sure how that would help your quirk. Well if I used it in a group setting with people that don't exactly know my quirk or that I'm there it would be easy to trick them, especially if they don't know how to break out of it. He teased, nudging the other. It's really useful, especially the smoke bombs. Oh well um, Hatsume mentioned that you used them and well I thought it was a good idea so Izuku smiled. Glad I could help then. Yo Shinsu, what was that? Denki shouted as he and Kirishima ran over you just totally took down Izuku. That was mostly because. It was really impressive. Izuku cut him off the smoke bombs made it harder to see where you were. I was running pretty blind. Sick man. Kirishima hit Shinsu on the back you gotta show me that move sometime too. Sure, Hatsume's tech really made the move though. He lifted the mask a little it lets me throw and change my voice. Awesome. Denki practically had stars in his eyes she made me stuff too. He lifted his arm, showing the weird metal circle attached to him it's totally amazing. Wanna see? That's enough class 1A. They all turned to see Vlad King and 1B standing behind him class B is scheduled to use this training room every afternoon. Izuku could see Aizawa roll his eyes as the teacher began shouting at the other students to finish up soon since they only had 10 minutes. Boo. Bad timing. Eraser. Get your students out of here so we can train. Aizawa turned to the other and glared. Are you trying to kick us out when we still have 10 minutes? Both of them seemed to ignore that Aizawa had already told the students to finish up. Did you hear that the exam has a 50% pass rate? That means your entire class might fail. Hiroshima and Shinsu looked nervous for a moment but Izuku only rolled his eyes. Monoma had a tendency to try and get under their skin. 
Wait, is that Monoma's hero costume? Denki asked Kendo who began explaining why he was dressed in a tux. He is correct, we'll likely crush each other in the test, so is the hand that fate deals. Takoyami spoke up, joining the group near the front. The classes take them in two different spots. Monoma let out a breath, trying to play it off as a scoff. How sad, we won't be able to face each other directly. Hiroshima and Denki rolled their eyes, turning back to their friends. So we'll be facing other schools too, Siro pointed out. We're also taking the test earlier than other students. Izuku added, he had heard the teachers talking about it after school one day. It's true, you'll be facing against students older than you who have trained longer than some of you with quirks you'll know nothing about in a test that's kept a mystery. Any plans tonight? Yuraraka asked Izuku as they walked back to the dorms. The two of them had stayed after to help midnight with something and were the last ones to leave. I promised Kauta and Uri that after camp we'd go do something fun together. The girl cheered. That sounds so cute. Any ideas? Not really. Kakin mentioned an arcade and there's a cafe me and Hitoshi go to a lot, but I don't have any other ideas. Oh, why don't we ask Sue? She has little siblings. Uraraka grabbed his hand and dragged him into the building, quickly searching and finding Tsu with Himiko doing their nails. Hey guys, Tsu, sibling emergency. Uraraka shoved Izuku to the ground, making him fall over onto Himiko who laughed Izuku needs to take Kauta and Ri out but doesn't have any ideas. What do they like? Iri likes walking around and shopping I think. She likes looking at all the stuff in stores. Kout is a bit more difficult. I think he likes a lot of what Kakin likes. Books, video games, that stuff. Though, take them to that mall. Himiko suggested they have that small arcade there and you can take them to all the stores. That's not a bad idea Himiko. Sue praised, making the other girl smile. Boom. Problem solved. Yuraraka grabbed Izuku again and led him out to the common room now get dressed and collect the children. Izuku laughed as the girl pushed and dragged him around before going to his room and changing. When he went back downstairs he saw Aizawa and Hizashi with Kauta and Iri, seeming to entertain the two while they waited for him. Nice Sam. Iri jumped into his arms while Kauta only held onto his hand what are we doing? She bounced excitedly making the teen laugh. Just to the mall. Let you and Kauta play a few games before we do a bit of looking and shopping. Can I get new shoes? Mine are all broken and stuff. Kauta lifted his foot, showing the broken bottom of the shoe. Let's do that first so you aren't walking around like that the entire time. Will you three be okay by yourselves? Aizawa asked, looking ready to change his own clothes and join them. We'll be fine dad, you and papa should relax for once, we'll be back in a few hours. Izuku assured Iziri and Kauta practically dragged him out of the building. He made sure the two kept a hold of his hands as they went into different subways to get to the mall. The two kids talking excitedly about what they wanted to buy or look at. Kauta seemed excited about the new shoes and games while Iri mentioned a store Kayama had taken her to once that sold pretty jewelry. Though, Nai-san, can we get our ears pierced? Some of the girls have really pretty rocks in their ears and I want some. We'll see Iri, what do you think Kauta? The other shrugged. It could be fun. He nodded, keeping the idea in the back of his head as they walked around the shoe shop with Kauta trying on different pairs before settling on a pair of red sneakers. Any reason for these ones? They match Tenko's. Izuku smiled and ruffled the younger's hair before taking the shoes to the front and paying for them so Kauta could change into the shoes right then. Going into the next few stores Uri seemed determined to show them different earrings they could get if they got their ears pierced. Even Kauta joined in and started looking at some of the simpler designed ones. Alright you two, you're not going to let this go are you? They both shook their head fine. Pick out one one eerie, pair that you like and we'll find some place to get them done. Both of them cheered and raced off to pick out their jewelry. A couple minutes later Kauta came back with simple black studs while Iri had picked out red crystals. We picked out some for you too. They showed him a pair of green crystals you'll get them too right. He always had a problem telling them no. Alright come on. The two cheered again as they followed him. So you all just won normal piercings? A man with multiple tattoos and piercings asked. There was a girl sitting at the front desk that was writing everything down. Yes, these two especially. The man smiled down at the kids and waved a little. No problem. Just send this to your guardian so we know you have permission and we'll get started. Izuku looked at the form before deciding to send it to Hazashi. He got an immediately reply with a bunch of emojis and exclamation points. The girl lead them into a room where the guy was setting up. Iri and Kauta jumped onto the couch in the corner while Izuku stayed standing, waiting for the man to explain. Alright, so I'll actually be using my quirk, which allows me to turn my fingers into needles. It's completely safe and sanitary. We have someone come in every month just to make sure. He nodded to the seat in the middle of the room will have you go first so they know it's not scary. How does that sound? Sounds good. Izuku sat on the chair. The two kids staring at him they picked out some jewelry. Would we be able to use those? The guy nodded, taking the earrings from Uri. Yeah, the green one's yours. Yeah, the red ones are hers and the black ones are his. Izuku explained, making his wings disappear so he could sit in the chair comfortably. 
Nice choice. I got a few of mine from that place. They make the best jewelry I swear. The guy set up a tray and marked Izuku's ears so just double check those are in the right spot. Then we'll get started. Izuku looked in the mirror before nodding all right. You'll feel a slight pinch, now breathe in and out. As soon as he set out Izuku could feel the needle pierce his skin. They repeated the process on the other ear before Izuku stood and looked in the mirror. What do you guys think? Kauta and Iri looked even more excited, both nodding and clapping how about Kauta first? Yes, the boy hopped onto the chair, letting the man go through the same process as Izuku held his hand ouch. Kauta almost rubbed his ear before stopping himself you made it look easy. Kauta complained, punching Izuku in the leg. Sorry. He then helped Iri onto the chair do you wanna hold my hand too? No, I gotta do this myself. She nodded looking determined. Okay. Izuku smiled and sat next to Kauta who could stop looking in the mirror. The man went through it again, giving Iri a moment to breathe before doing the other ear since she had acted a little more nervous than Kauta. And all done. Iri clapped and looking in the mirror next to Kauta do you guys like them? Thank you. We love them. Yeah. Izuku and the man chuckled watching the two. While those two look in the mirror, our girl up front will get you rung up. Don't be shy about coming back if anything is wrong or you want some more jewelry. Izuku thanked the man and went to the front, paying for the piercings while Kauta and Iri ran to catch up. What did Dan say? I didn't tell him, but Pops knows, so it'll be a surprise. Both of the kids seemed excited about the surprise while Izuku knew it would likely give the man a heart attack. When they got back to the dorms Hizashi and Kayama had immediately started hounding them. Show me, show me. Kayama picked up Kauta and Iri, gasping at the piercings they are so cute. I can't believe you got these without me. They look so good Izuku. I can't wait for you to show Shouta as soon as they walked into the dorms they saw Taoya, Aizawa, and a few of the other students lounging around. Hey guys what did holy shit? Denki shouted, falling off the couch as he ran up to them you got your ears pierced. You what? The teacher bolted up and inspected the three before turning to Taoya I blame you, you're a bad influence. I didn't even do anything. Once they were all off the bus Izuku looked around. He could see a lot of other schools and students. Not to mention with infrared he could see dozens of people in the building. I'm starting to get nervous. Me too. Izuku turned to Shinsu and tilted his head I'm worried whether I'll get it or not. Don't say that Shinsu. Say you will get your license. Shinsu jumped a little when Aizawa appeared next to him I expect you all to do great. Izuku. The teen turned just in time for Inasa to lift him into the air it's fantastic to see you. You too Inasa. When he set Izuku down the wing teen could see Shouto perk up in interest at the name. Found him. They looked over to see another group running over to them oh. Hey Izuku. The girl waved enthusiastically at him. Hi Kami, you know them. Denki leaned on Izuku's shoulder casually. Correct. Izuku and I met during the recommendation exam. He helped me pass it. I hung out with them a couple times. You would have passed fine by yourself in Inasa. Maybe. But you were a true friend and ally. Inasa. Kami. We should go. Sorry. Good luck Izuku. The two teens waved goodbye while everyone stared in shock. Jeez Izuku you really make friends with everyone. Mina teased. Izuku just shrugged. She wasn't exactly wrong. Eraser is that you? The hero paled for a moment, almost trying to hide behind Izuku's wings, though it didn't work it is. I remember seeing you on TV but it's been so long since we've been in person. A woman with a pirate-like outfit and green hair walked up oh, and this must be your kid Nem told me all about. I keep forgetting Aizawa-sensei and Izuku are related. Izuku turned, about to correct them but Katsuki just shook his head with a glare. Let's get married. No. Now Izuku was really confused. He assumed everyone knew Yamada and Aizawa were married. You would love me as a stepmom wouldn't you? His joke turned to Izuku who hunched in on himself a little. You am I don't know you. H-A-H-A. He even has her sense of humor. Izuku turned to his classmates who all just shrugged, seeming just as confused. Though Mina and Toru were giggling as they watched the two heroes interact. If you're here, that means. Yep, over here guys. This is UA class A. Oh really? I can't believe it, it's 1A. I've seen them on TV before. Hi, I'm Shindo. The older teen walked up and grabbed Izuku's hands before anyone could stop him. Though he did see the teachers and his classmates all freeze in surprise you guys have had a tough year huh? Must have been in Teri's. Back up asshole. Katsuki growled. Him and Todoroki making the teen back up while Shinsu checked on Izuku don't get all fucking touchy feely. I'll back you go Katsuki. You had an especially hard time. I'll do my best Katsuki smacked his hand away. How about you stop with the fake shit? The words out of your mouth don't match your eyes. Get your costumes and go to the orientation room. The students quickly followed Aizawa's orders, walking past the group without another word. Ms. Joke quickly leaned over to Izuku. I am so sorry. I would have stopped him if I had known. I it's okay Ms. Joke. Thank you. No problem kid. Good luck. He nodded and quickly joined the others up the steps. In the back of his mind he could hear Ms. Joke mention something about warning them. But Izuku already had a pretty good idea of what was going to happen. He had talked to Inasa and Kami not long ago about the license exam and what was going to happen. 
The two had told him that it was obvious the other students would be gunning for one and would need to watch their backs, though they both said they wouldn't go after Izuku, and he agreed to do the same. They also made it clear that they would go after the others, especially Todoroki, though that was mostly an asao while Kami didn't seem interested. Once they had changed and went to the orientation room Izuku had gotten a few looks from some of the students, though he wasn't sure why. You look a little scary. He turned to see Kami next to him. Her hero costume hadn't surprised him much. I do. It's all the dark colors and wings. He looked down and nodded a little in understanding. He did also have a knife on him but your hair makes it look cute. Thanks Kami. I don't think I could pull off your outfit. You couldn't they both laughed before looking to the front and listening to the man. This guy reminds me of you dad. Izuku rolled his eyes a little. He couldn't argue though. Both were pretty overworked and exhausted. He stiffened though when he heard the mention of stain. He was surprised the commission even wanted to acknowledge the man. Only a hundred of you will pass. He looked around to his classmates and saw a few of them look scared. He focused on Shinsu and grabbed his hand. You'll do fine Atoshi. Thanks Izuku. Aren't you too cute Izuku turned to Kami and glared at her, though the girl only laughed at them. Once they revealed the area and started passing out the targets Izuku took a moment to trying and think of where to place them. He thought about in between his wings but quickly ignored it. Unpleasant memories from the USJ appearing. After some thought he put them on his right shoulder, left hip, and one on his thigh. We should stick together. Shinsu spoke up as other students began to ran off the best plan is to work with people we already know the quirks off and help each other pass. As if, Katsuki already started leaving with Kirishima and Denki following after, complaining about the blonde as they went. I'll be leaving too, my quirk works better alone. Izuku wanted to argue but he knew the other wouldn't listen. I agree with Hitoshi, UA is at a disadvantage, let's move. The class followed as they began moving from the orientation room unlike other schools and classes our quirks were broadcast to everyone. All they had to do was watch the sports festival and know our strengths and weaknesses, so they'll be gunning for us. They will be, Inasa and Kami told me about it when we hung out last, they wanted to warn me. Very smart Izuku, Momo praised just before the buzzer went off. As soon as it rang through many of the other students appeared all of them throwing the balls at the group. Izuku acted quickly and drew his wings back before lighting them on fire and flapping them forward, creating a wave like fire that knocked all of the balls aimed at Hitoshi and him away. Thanks. Izuku only nodded, letting his wings stretched out behind him before activating the blades. He watched his classmates all defend themselves and the others, somehow able to avoid the onslaught of attacks. He saw some of the other students try to use their quirks and surprise them but Gyro was quick to stop them, disrupting the ground with her quirk. Any stray projectiles were quickly taken care of by Mina. Takoyami took some of his own balls and began targeting some of the students while everyone dodged or waited for an attack. Izuku watched them all closely. It was obvious the group wasn't expecting Wana to be so different from the sports festival, so they at least had surprise on their side for now. They're too strong together. Izuku zeroed in on Shindo, who slammed his hands to the ground everyone get ready. Izuku felt the tremor before it took over. Everyone run. Some of his classmates were able to get away before the wave hit them. Izuku had flown up, trusting his classmates to help themselves or the others. He saw a few of them grouping up in different areas before he landed out of sight. A hundred people were taken out by one person. He looked around using infrared and smiled, seeing an assass standing on top of a building while cackling. He's doing good isn't he? He wasn't surprised to see Kami again how angry would you be if I took you out now? She was casually tossing one of the balls up and down but Izuku knew she was ready to attack. Looking around them he didn't see anyone else close by, so she was alone. I don't think you could take me out. His hand lit on fire, also ready to attack. But I know a lot about you don't I Izuku? He tilted his head a little. About as much as I know about you. She smiled. I guess that's true. She offered her hand temporary alliance. Izuku stared for a moment before nodding and shaking her hand. Temporary alliance. He looked around again we have a class coming up on us. How good's your fire control? Pretty good. Soon enough the two were surrounded by other students what do you need me to do? Think they'd be scared if they thought they were on fire. Kami breathed out a mist just as Izuku dug his hands into the ground. Hellfire. I totally heard Izuku over here. Siro shouted as they ran over to a collection of rocks. They had been able to sneak by a group of students who all seemed scared of the little flames in the ground. I wonder what happened. Yuraka looked around before spotting Izuku and Kami standing face to face with his arm on fire Siro. On it, he began shooting tape between them, forcing the girl back while Izuku only watched them. Looks like our alliance ended Izuku. The girl landed away from them before pointing to Izuku's thigh where his target had been hit too bad. I think if I had more time I would have gotten you out. Or I would have gotten you. She looked down to see two of her targets lit up. What? She groaned before waving by Izuku. See you this weekend. Siro and Yuraka could only watch in confusion as the two parted. Izuku, are you okay? Yuraka asked, looking him over while Siro joined them on the ground. 
I'm alright. I got one person out though. Were you the one who created those flames? Why did the students look traumatized? 40 spots left. Izuku listened as the two talked, making his own plans and trying to find where the others were. It would be better if we hadn't gotten split up. There's a difference between us and the other students. Izuku spoke up as time goes they'll begin fighting over spots. Even near the beginning one of them was panicking about getting points. So they'll start turning on each other. Exactly. But I don't think we will. The two smiled at him and nodded we just. Wait, doesn't it sound like they're getting closer? Izuku activated survival, listening and looking for the other students. Between the time they had been talking they had gotten closer. I'll act as a distraction. You two stay low and look for openings, get points. What about you? I already took one person out. I just need one more before I can pass. I'm not worried about it at the moment. We'll need five altogether for us to pass. Let's do this. Siro sighed but agreed. Good, get ready. He stretched his wings out before taking off, immediately grabbing everyone's attention. He curled his wings into himself and shot closer to the ground like Hawks had shown him. Izuku, grab me and get high. The teen nodded, diving down and grabbing Siro before hovering now your Raka. She smiled and released the rocks with tape, trapping many of the students. They all tapped the other's targets, ignoring the older students pleading. Once they started walking back to the waiting area they ran into Katsuki, Denki, and Kirishima. Four of them cheered and celebrated while Izuku got next to Katsuki. You okay? Don't want to talk about it. Izuku laughed a little, getting a glare from the blonde. When they entered Izuku was revealed to at least see half the class had passed. Though he was worried about Ida and Kami, not seeing either of them. Izuku. The teen wasn't surprised when Inasa barreled over and picked him up again I knew someone as passionate as you would pass easily. Have you seen Kami? We teamed up earlier, but by the end two of her targets had been hit. Shame. I hope she passes. Inasa looked over as some of his classmates called I must go. But we shall meet up later. You two are close. He turned to see Shadow did you become friends after the exam. Something like that. He looked past the other and saw Shinsu glaring at the energetic teen is he okay. Shadow turned to where he was pointing, only shrugging. Not sure, do you know why he doesn't like me? He glared at me earlier. You did ignore him at the exam and declare war on me. It wasn't the best first impression. Shadow looked guilty for a moment. Sorry, I never apologized for that or the sports festival. It's fine Shouto. The teen nodded as the two joined their group of friends and waited for the others. For the hundred that passed, please look to the screen. They all watched in confusion and slight horror as the area was destroyed by bombs. Now we begin the second test, rescue procedures. Yurashi, the teen turned and glared at Shouto I wanted too. I can't help but hate you, son of Endeavor. Izuku felt his own flames react to the words after all, you have his eyes. With that Anasau walked away, leaving the other teen to stew in the words. Shouto, are you? A large-scale villain attack has accrued at Random City name. With buildings collapsing there are many injured. The walls began falling away again the first responders have been delayed. Until they arrive the heroes in the area will deal with the rescue efforts. Izuku deactivated the blades on his wings. He felt someone near him and turned to see Shinsu looking a little pale. Sorry, it just looks. Izuku looked over the destruction and nodded in understanding. Team up. The purple-haired teen seemed surprised but nodded. Not that it meant much since most of the class seemed to be sticking together again I can use survival and find people faster. Think you can do that hellfire thing to lead people back to the safety area. Izuku looked back to the area and nodded I'll let everyone know. Shinsu pulled his mask up while Izuku dug his hands into the ground follow the blue flames back to the safe area. Wana instantly agreed while the others seemed more hesitant. Itoshi, I hear someone over here. Let's go. Some of the others followed them. They could see what looked like a child crying with what looked like a head wound. What happened? My grandpa was crushed. This looks bad. This looks bad. Why would you say that? And Izuku cut the man off and kneeled down. Can you tell me your name? The man seemed genuinely caught off guard. Um, a head wound might make it difficult to remember. Shinsu joined him. Are you feeling any other pain? My breathing feels strange and my head hurts. Is it okay if I carry you to the recovery area? I don't want to risk the wound getting worse or not realizing you could be more hurt. Points for both of you. The man let Izuku pick him up and fly him to where some other students were setting up medical treatment. Once he was sure the man was taken care of he flew back over and saw Shinsu using his capture weapon to move some rubble. Izuku, do you see any signs here? Yes, two under that piece right there. He summoned the blades and broke the rock apart while Shinsu dealt with the victim. Asking them the same questions and trying his best to assure them. Though Izuku was having better luck you two will be just fine. We're going to get you to safety. Do you know if anyone else was nearby? No, there wasn't. Shinsu looked to Izuku who nodded. Not seeing another other signatures. Let's get them to the recovery area then. Are your flames still up? Yes, they each grabbed a person. Rather than flying ahead Izuku stuck next to Shinsu, continuing to look around we should let the others know this area is clear, no one else. Once they got to the area they told the woman what they could see wrong and the victim's responses. 
Good job both of you. Put these two over here. Hitoshi. Izuku grabbed his arm something's wrong. What is it? Over there. He pointed to one of the arena walls. He saw the actors break character for a moment something's coming. Be ready. Shinsu nodded and tugged on his capture weapon before securing his mask. You trust his word. They both looked over to see Shindo. With my life. The older stared at them before nodding. Also seeming ready for a fight. Just as others began to get ready explosions went off around them, proving Izuku had been right. It's part of the exam. The speakers announced another villain attack. If a villain wants destruction they'll attack a second time when the heroes are busy saving people. That's Gang Orca. He's ranked number 10. Izuku looked around and saw the actors begin to act scared, looking around widely at the heroes. We have to trust the other students to fight the others. They'll be heading right for us. Izuku crouched and dug his hands into the ground. After today he was more than glad his costume had gloves this'll hold them off for now. Flames erupted from the ground, surrounding the first aid station. Is he crazy? Shinsu sighed and activated the mask. No one worry, the flames won't burn anyone. To prove his point he waved his hand through part of the walls and showed that not even his clothes were cinched. How long can you hold that? Shindo asked. Izuku looked to him for a moment before crouching lower and making his wings disappear. Probably all day. But they'll notice sooner or later. My classmates know my fire won't burn them if I'm using it like this. Shindo nodded and got the other hero student's attention trying to quickly come up with a plan while they had the time. We need to get everyone ready to move. If you can walk on your own please help someone else. If you need assistance then get a hero. It was difficult to use infrared when fire surrounded them. But between the flickers he could see the villains hesitating to engage. Though Gang Orca looked ready. Izuku, we got everyone ready. Drop the back wall. He took a deep breath and made the back fire disappear. Letting the victims and heroes out while the villains were focused on the front we need to move quickly. They'll notice soon. I'll take out the henchmen in one second intervals. Will it affect the fires? Shindo joined him on the ground. His hands also in the ground. No. Good. Shindo activated his quirk dropped the fire. The walls dissipated as the henchmen fell from the quake. The shit he was cut off as Gang Orca appeared in front of him, knocking him out in one move. Before he could touch the ground Shinsu used his capture weapon to grab the fallen student and put him with the others. Suddenly Ice appeared racing towards the villain but he used the same attack and destroyed it. Izuku. Ajiro ran over, leading some of the others are you evacuating? We'll help. Thank you. The others are further back. We were able to move them quickly but I think this fight will get bad. They looked over, feeling a breeze really bad. Ajiro nodded and began ordering some of the others around. What's the plan? Shinsu had joined the team near the fight, letting out a low whistle when he saw the two teens fighting Gang Orca think they'll need help. I'll stay near if it gets out of control. If they're done moving people Mina mentioned survivors on the outskirts. Take down any villains you see. Shinsu smirked. Don't gotta tell me twice. See you on the other side Seraph. Izuku smiled back before turning back to the fight, reappearing his wings and activating the blades. He had a feeling he would need all of his quirks for this. Then again he didn't need a quirk to hear them already arguing with each other. While Gang Orca was distracted Izuku took the chance to take down the smaller villains. He snuck up on most of them and took them out quietly while the two kept yelling at each other. Behind us, one of the villains tried to hit Izuku with the cement gun but he easily dodged, grabbing the gun and melting it almost instantly before taking the villain down. When he was about to take down another villain a column of fire raced towards them. Izuku jumped in front of the villain, waving his hand up and forcing the fire to go around them before burning out. Would you stop fighting? Both teens looked surprised at Izuku's outburst and he couldn't blame them. There wasn't much that could get him to shout other than when he was fighting with Katsuki. Sadly Gang Orca moved quick, taking the two teens out while more of his henchmen ran towards the still evacuating victims. Izuku got ready to fight them off when someone pushed him aside. Guy's a bit of an asshole. Shinsu caught him before he could hit the ground. Both watching as Shindo shouted about stupid first years and took out the henchmen with his quirk but he gets the job done. I tripped them up. You two make sure they stay down. Both teens nodded and ran to the henchmen, knocking some out or trapping others. Backups arrived. They watched as Mina, Takoyami, Tsu, Toru, and Ajiro appeared. Everyone's evacuated. Shinsu pointed to where Gang Orca was. Go make sure those two idiots aren't dead. Izuku didn't need to be told twice. Flying into the air he saw Gang Orca escape the fire tornado they had created. While their powers combined together was amazing and a good show of strength, it wouldn't do much to the hero. But Izuku could go further than they could. Making sure his blades were ready he dropped down and spun before he slammed into the hero, stopping his movements. Back. Up. White flames danced around his arms and legs. The hero looking nervous as his body began to steam. He was ready to attack the man when the buzzer went off, signaling the end of the test. As soon as the buzzer went off Izuku extinguished the flames and looked to the two still on the ground. Are you two okay? 
It should wear off soon. The medical team will come to pick them up. Gang Orca assured as he poured water over himself your attack was impressive. Thank you sir. He bowed to the hero before going back over to Shinsu. You okay? The two walked back to the locker room to change, though it was more like Izuku was stomping. No, you wanna tell me what's wrong? Izuku stopped and turned to Shinsu with a glare, though it obviously wasn't aimed at the other. Shouto and Inasa are like brothers to me. They mean a lot to me and for them to hate each other so much annoys me, especially since Inasa keeps comparing him to Endeavor who has hurt Shouto and Taoya. I know he doesn't know that but uh, Izuku huffed it hurts and I don't know how to explain it. You don't need to. Shinsu wrapped an arm around Izuku's shoulders, slowly guiding him to the locker rooms I get it, sorta, but you're watching your brothers fight over something that doesn't matter. Maybe I should have forced them to meet before this, they probably both failed. And that's on them Izuku, not on you, I'm sure they'll talk after this. Izuku looked at the board, not totally surprised to see an asset. And Shouto missing, though he was surprised by Katsuki, the blonde looking just as annoyed about it. Todoroki, they turned to see an asset walking up. The two staring at each other before Inasa bashed his head into the ground I'm sorry. It was my fault you failed the exam. I was too focused and narrow-minded. Shouto stared at him for a moment before shaking his head. It was my fault. I was the one that insulted you the day of the exams and threatened Izuku. Still it was my Izuku cut him off by forcing the other teen's head up. You're both sorry, that's what's important. You need to talk your issues out more because I don't want my brothers fighting. The two stared at him for a moment before nodding. Izuku nodded back and let Inasa go. Allow us to exchange information. Inasa pulled his phone out, handing it to Shouto. Thank you for giving me a chance. No need. Once Izuku was sure they weren't going to argue again he went back over to Shinsu and Momo. Now we'll be handing out papers that show what you did wrong and why you lost the points. Wow yeah Momo you got a 94. Good job Momo. Thank you Jairo and Izuku, I'm quite proud of my score. Well, Izuku looked to Shinsu who had a death grip on his paper I I got a 91. They marked me down for the parts I just stood there. That's amazing Hitoshi, you did amazing. Izuku was soon handed his own paper. What you get? Momo and Shinsu read the paper over, both staring wide-eyed at the number Izuku you got a 99. I guess they knocked me down when I wasn't quick enough to grab Shindo. Izuku that's amazing. You got the highest score. No fair. Mina and Kaminari complained. Hanging off of the teen with tears why is he so good at this? I just did what calmed Kauta and Uri down. That's so cute. Mirio stared at the file, suddenly feeling sick. He knew Night Eye had been following this case for a while and had plans to take the organization down, plans that involved Mirio, but he felt like he couldn't do this anymore. Even though he now had one for all and amazing control over his own quirk, this task felt impossible. Sir, the hero hummed what if I know people affected by this? What do you mean? My um, I have little siblings. I met them my first year, and from what the oldest has told me Dot him and his sister would have had direct contact with this man. Would they be able to tell us anything about him? I'm not sure I'm comfortable asking. Might I sighed. I understand but if they could help then it would make this all easier. His dad might be able to ask. Do you know the hero eraser hat? I'm not asking them. Mirio looked to the ground a little. He had assumed that Aizawa would react like that. But Night Eye seemed determined. It might be uncomfortable. Uncomfortable doesn't begin to cover it Night Eye. Aizawa stood up and slammed his hands against the table. Gaining the other teacher's attention my kids went through hell just to escape and you want to remind them and ask about one of the main people who did all of that. Overhaul needs to be dealt with. If they can give us information then. Go fuck yourself. Show. Present Mike put a hand on his back I get it. But maybe at least ask Izuku. I must agree with present Mike. He would be the most readily available and would likely have the best memory of it. Aizawa glared at All Might. He knew all of them were right, but these were his kids. Izuku still had problems sleeping alone and often dragged Kauta and Iri with him. And if he couldn't steal them away then the old league and some of the other class insomniacs would end up in the common room having a sleepover. Mirio. Yes sir. I will be with Izuku the entire time. I don't care what happens, you and I both know when Izuku's dealing with too much. Of course, Mirio wouldn't fail his little brother. Good, you'll talk to him in the nap room. Nap room, it's where they used to stay while everyone was in classes. Mirio explained usually on your breaks we would join them and work on our homework. When they made it to the room night I stared at it before sitting on the couch. Though he was rather stiff, Mirio sat next to him but he was more relaxed. Aizawa stood near the door, typing on his phone before putting it away. He'll be here in a moment. After a few minutes Izuku opened the door wearing black sweats. He stared at the group for a moment before zeroing in on Night Eye. You're Sir Night Eye. The hero nodded. Izuku looked to Mirio and Aizawa, obviously seeing the worry and anger if this is about Chisaki Kai you're not talking to Iri. She is six. Izuku crossed his arms and let his wings flare out a little she won't know anything I don't already know. You're not talking to her. Night Eye stared right back at Izuku. Would you answer our questions then? You don't have to kid. We won't make you Izuku. Night Eye looked like he wanted to argue. 
but it was clear that Mirio and Aizawa would win. It's fine, they both knew it wasn't what are you going to ask for any information you have on Overhaul and his organization. Izuku nodded slowly before stepping fully into the room and closing the door. Aizawa followed behind Izuku to the other couch, staying near if the kid needed him. His name is Chisaki Kai and his quirk is also called Overhaul. It allows the user, through contact, to destroy and or reshape anything they want however they want. It works on all living and non-living things. He pulled his legs up onto the couch and wrapped his arms around them. He believes that quirks as a whole are a plague to the world. He wants to get rid of them. Do you know why? Not other than that. You spend more than 10 minutes with him and it becomes clear, Izuku paused, tugging on his shirt a bit before lifting it up, showing the scars but most importantly the black veins that stretched across his chest last I knew he was developing quirks represents. He wants to be able to erase her quirks altogether, it was his plan to use Iri as a way to do that. Those marks are from the sepresents then. Izuku nodded, tugging his shirt back down how did he plan to use Iri? She has a quirk that allows her to reverse things. Bring them back to their original state or further in the past. I'm not sure exactly how he wanted to use it but he talked about her being important a lot. And your relationship to Eri. All for one wanted to work with Overhaul. They used me as a bargaining chip. I would be Eri's keeper and they were allowed to test their presence on me. Nothing that would permanently erase my quirk though. Might I not it. There were a hundred other questions he could ask Izuku but he had a feeling most of them would be useless or pointless to the case. One last question. Would you be able to give us a rough layout of any buildings or power structure he may have? I could draw up blueprints of his buildings easily. They never bothered covering my eyes when I was taken around the area and any power structure he had was obvious. Then I thank you for your time Izuku. I'll have a racer head contact me and send them over whenever you're able. Night I got up to leave but Izuku stopped him. Wait. He turned to the teen you have a plan to take him out. We do. Izuku thought for a moment before standing and staring at Night Eye. I want to intern with you. Everyone was talking in class. Izuku had heard a few things about a work study but he wasn't interested in hearing much about it. He already had a general idea of what a work study was thanks to the big three hanging out with him during and after school. They were more than willing to talk about their days. Except for Tamaki who would just lay down and listen to them talk. Izuku. He turned a little to see Shinsu behind him looked a little worried are you okay? He seemed a little. Stressed last night. Yeah just some. Personal stuff. You know you can talk to me right. If not me then your siblings or yeah Momo or something. I know. He looked to the doors. He could see Aizawa talking to three figures in the hall. Listening he knew who it was immediately I'll try to explain more later. Shinsu didn't look quite convinced but he nodded his head anyway. Everyone take your seats. Some of the students jumped while others just turned to face the front now that you're all listening. We can go into more detail about the work study. Aizawa looked to Izuku before looking at the door you can come in now. As the door slid open Mirio, Tamaki, and Nejire walked in, two of them looking excited while Tamaki was trying to avoid all of their looks I'll have people with more experience explain everything to you. Listen as they explain how work studies are different from internships. They're top of the class in third years, the big three. Everyone gasped except for Katsuki who rolled his eyes, Shouto, Shinsu, and Momo who all just waved. Introduce yourselves briefly. Let's start with Amejiki. Aizawa gestured to the teen who looked like he wanted to be anywhere else but there, though the other students seemed to take it as of intensity rather than nervousness. Tamaki focused on Izuku. The winged teen smiled though it didn't help Tamaki much as he began to shake. You two go. The other two turned to him I just just can't. As he began explaining why he was still nervous the students seemed to finally realize he just had anxiety. He turned away and faced the wall, resting his head against it. This is our kitten Amejiki Tamaki. Nejire teased and my name is Nejire Hato. We're supposed to talk about work studies. You first years have a really fun time ahead of you. She blinked for a moment and Izuku knew right away that she was going to ask the others a million questions. She even paused at Izuku's desk and fiddled with his wings for a moment. This is irrational. Aizawa was glaring at the girl who ignored him. I'll get the class back on track Eraserhead. Mirio tried to assure him but at this point Izuku knew the other was going to get off track as well. You guys must not have a sense of humor. New plan. All you first years fight me all at once. What? They were all in the training are in their gym uniforms facing Mirio. While the others may have not known Mirio's quirk, even those that had met him before, Izuku knew what it was and had even trained with Mirio a few times. While the older was strong, fast, smart, and knew how to utilize his quirk so did Izuku. His infrared allowed him to see the team no matter what. When he slipped into the ground or through people he still had a slight heat signature and when he deactivated his quirk his body gained its heat back. The other students were all stretching and getting ready, but Izuku stayed close to the back. If Mirio was trying to do what Izuku thought he was then he would try to attack Izuku last since he was the most likely to beat him. He understood where some of his friends were coming from. They had fought pros and villains, even winning most of those fights, but this was different. 
They weren't in a life or death fight and this wasn't a teacher holding back. This was an upperclassman who had more training, had likely fought more unknown villains, and had a quirk none of them knew. If anything it would be like the fight at USJ where they got lucky because the pro heroes showed up. The first person to attack was Katsuki, which didn't surprise most of them but it did surprise Izuku. Katsuki had been around since the elder's second year. He knew Mirio's quirk and had seen him fight Izuku. Zuchin. Izuku hadn't moved from his spot in the back but Katsuki had launched himself over the group you and I both know you can win a fight against him, even I can kick his ass sometimes. So what the hell are you doing? Look, he pointed to where the others were just attacking, not seeming to have a plan as the long range attacked them. Katsuki watched them for a moment. Seeing Mirio take down Takoyami, they could hear Tamaki talking to some of the students that had mentioned Mirio's quirk. Fucking fine. They both watched the third year take down their friends. Not bothering to attack this is boring. Finally it seemed like the others had noticed that Izuku and Katsuki hadn't moved. Why aren't they helping? I suggest you stay focused on me. Mirio was quick to begin taking down the others. Though Izuku did feel a little bad not actively fighting against the older. He can slip through things but his attacks are still making contact. We can attack the moment before he hits us. Hell yeah. That seemed to get them a little more excited as they got into fighting positions. Even Katsuki got ready, likely bored from just standing around. Come on Izuku. Mirio slipped in the ground. As soon as he heard his name Izuku used infrared and got his wings ready. He followed the slight heat until he knew where it would end up. He turned around just before Mirio appeared and was already dodging away this is fun. After that he changed his focus back to the other students, using Kirishima to block Katsuki's attack before knocking them both down. Once everyone else was down Mirio turned to Izuku with a smile. Everyone watched them stare at each other before Izuku put his hands up and sat down. No fair. No one said you had to fight. Aizawa argued Todoroki didn't fight either. The other teen just shrugged a little. While Mirio explained to the others his quirk and how he trained it and learned from the pros, Shinsu walked up to Izuku with his arms crossed. You knew. Izuku nodded and why didn't you fight? Me and Mirio have trained together before. Even when he goes through things I can still see him faintly, like a ghost. And since I can see him and I know when his quirk is activated or not it doesn't work well against me. Especially when I can just fly into the sky or cover myself in fire the entire time. Why do you have to be so overpowered? Shinsu banged his head against Izuku's shoulder who chuckled you just know everyone and how to counter their quirk don't you? Izuku felt himself freeze a little what? And nothing, you should listen to Mirio and the others though. Shinsu stared at him for a moment before nodding and facing the front. Izuku lifted his gloved hands, taking one off to trace the scales near his neck. They still felt strange and foreign. If Sir Night Eye had helped Mirio with his quirk and one for all, maybe he would be willing to help Izuku with his own. Izuku, Hawks burst into the common room, scaring most of the other students how would you feel about adding another brother? Did you steal someone? Kaoya asked. What? No, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. As the number two hero shouldn't you know? Ada waved his arms, looking a little panicked at the implication the hero didn't know laws. A. Not that important. What is important is this question. He turned back to Izuku I already know you aren't choosing me for work study. They had talked about it the night before since Izuku hadn't wanted to disappoint the hero so I want to take on someone new. And I was thinking Takoyami. Me. The teen looked a little surprised why me. Hawk sighed and grabbed his shoulders. Listen Takoyami. Us birds have to stick together and Izuku cut him off. He thinks your quirk is impressive. You just need a little more practice and he can give you that. Izuku. Don't ruin my bird aesthetic with your logic. He scolded. Though Izuku only rolled his eyes but yet that too I guess. I I would be honored. Hawks. Stop coming into the dorms unannounced. Aizawa wrapped his captured weapon around the hero and began dragging him out I don't care if you break in at night but you can't do it when we're supposed to be awake. Ah, uh, the racer head I was just bonding with my bird children. You can't stop it. The students in league watched as Aizawa yanked the hero around before throwing him over the wall. Your life is so strange Izuku. Kaminari pointed while trying not to laugh. Don't laugh, you live with him now. Izuku wasn't sure what he expected when he walked with Mirio into the agency. But it definitely wasn't Sir Night Eye having his sidekick Bubble Girl strapped to a tickle machine. Um, Mirio waved his hand a little. Don't worry about it Izuku, he just does this. Izuku felt like he should worry more sir. We're here. The hero paused and turned to them. While Night Eye seemed focused on Izuku, Mirio took the chance to let the poor girl out. I see. Night Eye looked him up and down, like he wanted to say something. But he was silent. Do you have your contract? Yes sir. He pulled the sheet out of his bag and set it on the desk as the hero sat down they said you just have to stamp it and send it back. I'm aware. I have my own work study student already. Though you were very aware of that if I am correct, Mirio is your brother. The girl made a surprise sound before hitting the other teen. Why didn't you tell me you had a brother? I have. You've seen the pictures. The two let the girl and teen argue while they continued talking. 
As I'm sure you're aware you'll be here for around 4 months. You'll be paid wages and be excused from classes, meaning your classmates will likely pull ahead of you academically. Izuku nodded again then I have a question, why did you want to do this? You're working to take down overhaul. That's not the only reason. Night I sighed I know there's another reason so you might as well spit it out. Izuku stared at him for a moment before looking off to the side. I was born with one quirk, pyrokinesis. Then when I was kidnapped I developed two more quirks, survive, and my wings. Then when I was taken again I was forced to take a fourth and from what the heroes and teachers have gathered I was meant to be a Namu of some kind. He brushed the scales along his neck I still have little control over my scales and even my pyrokinesis still has secrets. I figured since you helped Mirio so much you could help me. So you asked to join because of overhaul and your quirks. Izuku nodded I see. You too, leave the room. Mirio paused, looking to Izuku who nodded slightly. Bubble Girl was quick to usher them both out. He could hear them talking in the hallway, a small assurance he wasn't alone. Do you know why Tagata was chosen for one for all? That surprised Izuku. He didn't expect the hero to know he knew about that. Mirio's going to be an amazing hero. He's worked hard and he has the heart for it. So you aren't jealous about him being picked instead of you. Excuse me. Izuku felt his wings curl tightly around his back. What was Night Eye talking about? Like you said, you had three quirks at the time, you're trained, surrounded by other heroes, and you even got your provisional license with an almost perfect score. He stood from the desk and Izuku took a small step back you even have a past with all for one. His breath caught in his throat you would have been the perfect choice. I don't want it and Mirio's the perfect choice for it. Do you truly think that? Of course I do. Night I got closer as Izuku took more steps back. Except you won't look me in the eyes when you say it and from what I understand you even feared All Might at one point because of the power, so why wouldn't you want it for yourself? Protect your brother from something you've already gone though, just like you're doing for your sister now right? Mirio doesn't have to worry about dot him, he's in jail, there's nothing I can protect him from. Might I tilted his head. You don't think all for one planned for this, did you? Izuku took a deep breath, trying to remember all the times Katsuki told him to stand up for himself did you plan on Mirio being chosen? On all for one coming back. All Might retiring instead of dying. On the League of Villains being defeated because their members were spies. Under mind control, or just low-level thugs. He took a step forward, putting him almost chest to chest with what did you plan for Sir Night Eye. Izuku tried to calm himself down as his wings flared out. I'm proud of Mirio and the work he's done. On his own quirk and the quirk he will make his own. I was scared of All Might because I knew everything about him and I was told from a young age that he would kill me on the spot for working with villains. And if all for one ever gets out it won't be Mirio or All Might he'll have to worry about, just like Overhaul shouldn't focus on Eri or you. The winged teen was practically panting at the end of his rant, staring Night Eye dead in his eyes and daring him to say a word against Izuku. Good job Izuku. Mirio hugged the teen as soon as he came out of the office you didn't even have to fight sir for it. It'll be great to work with you kid. Izuku nodded to the woman, grabbing Mirio's arm and dragging him back into the office, Night Eye leaving it and joining Bubble Girl in the hall. Izuku, the teen kept his head down are you okay? Night I said something. Mirio turned, likely ready to yell at the hero but Izuku stopped him I'm proud of you Mirio. You've been a great older brother. H helping me, Iri, and Kauta has always meant a lot to me and I've always thought you'd make a great hero. He paused for a moment I never saw you taking one for all but I'm glad it was someone like you who did and I think you were an amazing choice. I know what it's like having more than one quirk so Mirio cut him off with a hug. Thanks Izuku. Honestly I've been questioning if it was a good idea I had it dot with everything sir and All Might told me I thought you would be the better choice, I even told them that. Izuku's eyes widened you've been through so much and have helped so many people, even willing to deal with past traumas just to make sure your family is safe. But hearing that you think I'm a good choice dot it means a lot Izuku, so thank you. If you ever even think of trying to give me one for all I'll run away. Haha. <laughs> Always the jokester. Izuku. The teen looked up from his papers to see Shinsu leaning against the doorway. How'd the meeting with Night I go? I start tomorrow. The other hummed, shutting the door and sitting on the bed next to Izuku. You know, your dad actually offered to take me on. Izuku turned to him a little surprised I know. But he thinks it'd be a good idea working with an underground pro who's connected to the school. Hard to find underground agencies who will take someone apparently. That's good. They sat there silently for a moment, for once the silence feeling awkward. Are you sure you're doing okay? Shinsu asked you've seemed out of it ever since Aizawa-sensei called you from the dorms and your meeting with Night Eye seemed to make it worse. Izuku looked off to the side a little. One of his hands rubbing the scales you can talk to me Izuku, I won't judge, I won't even say anything if you want me to. Shinsu leaned over the bed to pick up Yin, setting the cat in Izuku's lap. Everything. He slowly pet the cat, 
The new warm texture and the sound of purring grounding him everything feels unnatural. He showed his arm where green scales collected when I got my wings and survive I didn't have to worry about it because I had no other choice but to adapt, to use them any way I could. But now dot now I have the chance to learn, to relax, to take it slow and dot and I think it's making me a worse hero, a worse protector. Izuku. He grabbed the white-haired teen's free hand, squeezing it tightly getting the chance to finally live doesn't make you a worse hero, it just means your body gets the time to feel natural to not have to force it. In the nicest way possible your quirks could have been stronger if you weren't constantly being tortured and put under stress, if you didn't have to do all of those things. Then what was the point? Izuku looked to Shinsu, tears slowly falling from his eyes and making the scales on his face almost sparkle what was the point of all the training, the adapting, the surviving if it wasn't to make me the best version, to make my quirks the best they could be, so they could use me. What was the point of any of it if I'm still too weak to do anything? Izuku. Shinsu grabbed the teen's face as he began quietly sobbing. Yin jumping and running to the floor don't ever call yourself weak. He pulled Izuku closer, letting the other sob into his chest you're not weak I promise. You're just dot you're hurt and you're finally able to heal so dot so don't call yourself weak. Please. I am sorry. Don't apologize either. He carefully picked Izuku up and situated them so Shinsu was leaning against the wall while Izuku laid against his chest did something happen to spur all this on. The hair, scales, the fight with Kakin, and, talking about overhaul. And I guess some stuff night I said. What'd he say? There's no way to gotta let him talk shit. Izuku let out a wet chuckle, lifting his hoodie sleeve to whip the tears still clinging to his lashes. And Mirio wasn't there. I think he was trying to get under my skin anyway. See how I would react if someone brought up a bunch of stuff. I am working with him specifically to help with my quirks and take overhaul down so it makes sense. Makes sense my ass. Izuku punched him in the arm he shouldn't do that anyway. It's messed up. I'm fine Itoshi, just, I'm just tired. Shinsu sighed and grabbed one of the blankets, throwing it over them. Then go to sleep, I'll wake you up for dinner. Why you don't have to? I'm already committed, I'm not going anywhere, so sleep Angel. Izuku relaxed against Shinsu before pausing and looking up. Did you call me Angel? Go to sleep. Study group. Gucci eye bags. Fucking help I called him Angel before he went to sleep and now we're cuddling. Isaac Newton, AWWW. Permit, wanna see these messages later? Hero, Gucci eye bags. He doesn't back read and I'll delete all of these before he even touches his phone. Katy Perry, who are we talking about? Sanic, I believe Izuku if I'm not mistaken. Gucci eye bags, yes I'm gay panicking over here. Gucci eye bags, I'm literally going to be working with his dad for four months. WTF do I do? Kermit, ask him for advice. Gucci eye bags, I want you dead too. Isaac Newton, you guys are so cute. I don't know why you aren't dating already. Even Yamomo ships it and she never joins in. Gucci eye bags, I'm sorry what? Kermit, the girls all have a gossip group. We talk about you too sometimes. Gucci eye bags, terrible to know thank you. Katy Perry, do I come up? Isaac Newton, kinda. We've talked about how cute it is when you hang out with Taoya and the others. Hemiko usually joins in when we do that. Sanic, I do not think it is wise to talk about fellow students without their knowledge. Gucci eye bags, I asked for help yet none of you are helpful thanks. Izuku followed behind Mirio quietly. Ever since the other day the blonde had been giving him weird looks and Izuku understood why, but he wouldn't explain further. He knew Mirio idolized the man they were working for and Izuku couldn't blame him. Night Eye was smart, a good hero, and a good trainer, but he had a certain way with words and assuming he knew everything about a person just based on their future and actions. While Izuku agreed that actions spoke louder than words, he also knew that sometimes words needed to explain those actions. Night Eye had split them up to do basic patrols. While the police didn't have enough physical evidence against Chisaki, they had more than enough witness testimonies for Mary and Izuku. It would never make sense to him why they hadn't just captured the man right away. Seraph are you? My my, Izuku felt his entire body freeze and heat up all at once I didn't expect to see heroes around here. He turned his head slowly to see Chisaki standing at the mouth of an alley, his hands hanging lazily as he tilted his head at Izuku. What agency are you two with? We're only students. Mirio waved his hands a bit. Though Izuku could see small traces of power bouncing off the other teen were too low to be associated with any agencies right now. The winged teen hadn't thought about Mirio's feelings. Izuku could shut down, he had been trained too, but Mirio had family that was affected by this man. We're just getting some experience. Izuku put himself between Chisaki and Mirio, letting his wings flare that small bit but we need to finish patrolling the area. Right, we should be on our way. Mirio turned away with a hand grasping Izuku's jacket, silently trying to tug the younger away from the man. Of course, have a good patrol Phoenix. As soon as the word was spoken Mirio turned on his heel, looking ready to try and attack the man. Izuku grabbed him and pushed him back to the front, continuing to walk like nothing happened. Don't. Mirio stared at him for a moment before nodding. 
taking a deep breath before going back to smiling and walking confidently. He noticed the blonde pulling out his phone and contacting the other two though. We'll meet up with them on one of the corners. Right. Izuku felt himself slipping just that little bit, feeling like he was just the robot who watched over two kids and did as told. Seraph, he looked up a little, feeling Mirio's hand on the back of his neck, gripping it lightly you with me. I'm here Lemillion. They made eye contact and held it before Mirio let go sorry. No need to apologize. Let's go tell sir what happened. At least when they met up the hero seemed genuinely sorry that the two had somehow run into the man. But Izuku had the feeling it was planned. You've been investigating him for a while right? Izuku wasn't looking at any of them. His arms crossed and eyes focused on the side walk off to the side. We have. He likely knows. He's smart but he's getting cocky. He gripped his arms tighter he most likely knows I'm interning here as well and if I'm here he assumes Uri is close. Finally looking to them he sighed the only reason he never went after her before was because we live at UA. If he's confident enough to approach us during the day in public, knowing we're here with you, then it means something. Whatever they've been planning could be almost done then. Or close enough that they think they can hold us off long enough to get to Iri and finish it. Night Eye glared at Izuku a little, though the team didn't react. We shouldn't be jumping to conclusions. Haste isn't what we need right now. Take your time pursing the target. The team nodded once the strange incident with the car accident and now this could mean anything. Do not assume you are correct. Izuku felt the need to argue. He was the one with the most information whether they liked it or not. But he only nodded again, keeping his mouth shut tightly. You two head back to the agency for today. Let's go bubble girl. Yes sir. As soon as the two were out of your shot Mirio took his visor off and grabbed Izuku again. Izuku I need to know you're actually with me. You would never let someone say those things to you. I, I am. He bit his lip and ran his hand over his scales do you dot do you know how people always talk about two sides of the same coin. Mirio frowned a little all might at all for one. Since I was since stuck with him for so long I grew scared of all might once I was out. I see. The blonde sighed a little let's go get changed and then check on the others. Maybe that will help. In Izuku's opinion it didn't help. It felt like it made it worse because now they were in his sight again. He was the one watching over them while overhaul Aizawa was away talking to Mirio. He didn't want the two away either because when they were away it meant bad things were happening and he couldn't be away from them because what if all for one was doing something to them? Angel. He looked to his door to see Shinsu. It felt so similar to the other night when the teen had comforted him after his meeting with Night Eye you doing alright. He looked down to the two sleeping children wrapped in blankets. No, do you want to talk about it? Yes, Shinsu didn't need any more prompting, shutting the door behind him before sitting next to Izuku. The white-haired teen hesitated for a moment before leaning against the other Mirio and I were on a routine patrol while Night Eye and Bubble Girl checked out one of the locations. We ran into overhaul. He felt Shinsu lay a hand between his wings, lightly scratching there and making Izuku relax against him he knows about the investigation. He called me Phoenix even. And you told this all to Night Eye right? I also told him that the man's getting cocky. He's not trying to hide much. Night Eye told me not to rush in, take my time on the investigation. Full offense to Night Eye. But he wasn't one of the people kept and experimented on. Izuku huffed a little and cuddled further into Shinsu's side. Mirio's angry about some of it. He almost attacked Overhaul before I dragged him out. I think he's telling Dad. He should. I know you want to be involved Angel, but what is this doing to you mentally? I don't. I don't know. He looked down at his scarred hands I can't tell if it's because of Overhaul or Night Eye at this point. Seeing and hearing Overhaul made me scared but I still wanted to protect Mirio. Night Eye dot is complicated. Are you scared of him? No, at least I don't think so. If he wasn't scared then why and how did Night Eye make him feel that way? I don't know but I'm not scared of Night Eye specifically. But it could be something else to do with him. Izuku only shrugged fair enough, the teen huffed. Wanna hear about Todoroki and Bakugu getting their ass beat? Hey Izumbro. Hiroshima wrapped an arm around his shoulders with a smile Tsu, you're Araka, and I ended in the news. Isn't that cool? The teen smiled and nodded. That's pretty amazing Ijiro. I'm glad you're all okay though, I read about what happened. Izuku felt slight dread pool in his stomach. Everything felt off, something was going to happen you got checked out though right? Yeah man, all good. That's good dot just be careful. The redhead paused, looking at Izuku with worry. Is everything alright? I'm not sure. Kirishima stared at Izuku before smiling. That's alright. We're heroes and we have each other's back right. The winged teen nodded why don't we walk to the train together next time we work. Maybe it'll help with the nerves. Thanks Ijiro. Oh, are you guys heading out too? Both boys looked to see Tsu and Yuraka heading out. Yeah, we should all walk together. Hiroshima looped an arm around Izuku as Ubro here is having some nerves. Great idea. Hiroraka raced forward and grabbed Izuku's other arm with a smile we can talk about our internships too. I don't mind. Su walked on the other side of Yuraka with a smile. Thanks. Even as they walked though, Izuku felt the same sense of unease and after years he learned to trust his instincts. Shinsu hadn't been there when he woke up. 
All of them were taking the same bus, and Mirio, Tamaki, and Nejire had texted him that night to make sure he was okay. Something was going on. What the heck is going on? As soon as they entered the building Izuku immediately saw Shinsu and Aizawa standing off to the side. He assumed his dad called for Shinsu early since he didn't walk with their group. Good you're all on time. Everyone turned to Night Eye thanks to the intel provided by all of you. We've made great strides with this investigation. Shinsu looked to Izuku with a knowing smile. I've called you all here to discuss how exactly we know the small organization known as Shai Hasekai is plotting something. Let's go over everything step by step. As Night Eye began leading them to the conference room his friends went to Aizawa to ask questions. But Izuku was mostly focused on Tamaki. He hadn't gotten to talk to the teen in a while. Are you okay? He pointed to the bandage on Tamaki's arm does it still hurt? I it's not bad. The upperclassman looked guilty for a second did dot did it hurt a lot when? Only when they were testing a new one. He put a hand over the bandage, warming it and making Tamaki sigh don't compare our pain Tamaki, I would prefer none of you ever feel a sliver of it. The older nodded before following Mirio into the conference room. When Izuku walked in he was dragged between Mirio and Aizawa with Shinsu on the teacher's other side. He was confused before remembering the three knew about his and Uri's time with Shai Hasekai specifically, while his other friends only knew small details. He ignored the heroes all explaining the information they had gathered, only really paying attention when Gran Torino got his attention, which surprised him but he assumed the man had heard from All Might and knew some details about Izuku. There is another person who can give us intel. Night Eye looked to Izuku who nodded and stood up explain how you know first. Please call me Izuku or Seraph. He bowed a bit for a long time my sister and I were being held by overhaul. That got a few gasps I learned his quirk, his building layouts, his power structures, everything. There was no thought that at some point we would escape, luckily we did. But overhaul is aware that I'm working with Sir Night Eye. Wouldn't that put us at a disadvantage then? Not exactly. When Mirio and I ran into him, he was cocky and didn't think to try and trick us. He thinks he's winning this, which means he's further in his research. He sat back down and nodded to Night Eye. From what we've observed Izuku is correct. Like the bullet that was used on him, he nodded to Tamaki it's attacking the quirk itself. While I'm sure Izuku and Uri escaping set their projects back. They still have made great progress Izuku zoned back out again, just staring at the desk as Night Eye finished the meeting. As soon as it was over he saw his friends try to race over and talk to him, but someone else grabbed him first. Sorry for the surprise kid, but we haven't gotten the chance to meet. He looked down to see Gran Torino offering a hand I'm Gran Torino, I taught that fool you call a teacher. It's nice to meet you. He shook the man's hand is there a reason you wanted to talk? Mostly one, did Tashinori tell you who his teacher was? No, but it was Nana Shimura right? The man nodded that's Tenko's grandma. She was, he sighed she left her family to protect them, but it seemed to do the opposite so I'm sorry you got caught in the crossfire. However I'm thankful you were able to bring Tenko back. He patted Izuku's arm with a smile now I get to play at being grandpa. Do you know what the brat likes? Video games and sweets. That I can do. He patted the teen's arm again you're Tenko's family too I've been told. Don't be shy to visit this old man alright. I will sir. Bah, none of that sir stuff alright. Now go with your friends, they look worried. He turned around and saw Shinsu and Mirio standing not far from them, watching the two talk. Right, he waved goodbye to Gran Torino and walked over to them where are the others? Aizawa Sensei, Tamaki, and Nejire are distracting them, Mirio explained. His usual smile looking a little forced we can leave now and avoid them until the raid. Or I can mind control them and get them to go away. Izuku chuckled a little but shook his head. No, I should talk to them, they're going to be worried. You don't have to angel, if you want to avoid them they'll understand. It's alright, I'll catch up with you guys later. As soon as Izuku was out of earshot Mirio turned to Shinsu and grabbed his shoulders. I like you Shinsu, but if you hurt my brother I will kill you. Great, good to know. Izuku was able to convince the other three to hold off on questions and talking about it until they got to the dorms and could change. Though once he was changed and he opened his door, the three were right there waiting. You can sit wherever. All three chose the bed, sitting around Izuku in a semicircle with Uraraka right in front of him. What do you want to know? Are you okay? Uraraka grabbed one of his hands, holding it close. I, I don't know what happened but I know you were hurt and working on this case isn't easy right? He sighed a little and looked down, taking a deep breath before speaking. It's not. I, it's kind of terrifying. Already being on the case with Mirio had me scared he was going to get hurt. But now all of you, Dad, Hitoshi, you're all in danger so Tsu grabbed his shoulder, making him stop. We're going to be heroes, Kira. We know we'll get hurt and we're prepared for it, but what about you? Yeah man, you're talking about us and the others, but what about you? This has gotta be traumatic or something right, especially after everything else. Izuku looked at them with wide eyes before smiling sadly. I, I have problems thinking of myself sometimes, especially when it comes to O overhaul or all for one. He rolled his shoulders back, having trouble looking them in the eye for a while it was worrying about my parent. Then it was Taoya and Tenko. 
Then Harry and Kauta and Dot and there hasn't been a moment where I'm not worrying about someone else. He looked at his arms, seeing the scales move I can take more than they can, more than any of you can. That doesn't mean you should. Yuraka pulled him into a hug. The other two joining you're our friend Izuku and if you won't worry about yourself, then we'll worry about you. Yeah, we're friends and we got your back. We'll be there for you Izuku. He felt his shoulders shake a little. It took him a moment to realize it was because he was crying. T thank you. All the heroes and police stood outside the compound, preparing for the fight that was so to come. Even the other interns were getting ready in their own nervous ways. You nervous? Izuku looked up to Itoshi, shrugging a bit. Not sure, he looked to the compound I can hear and see just about everything in there. But, there's something they're hiding. Think it's important enough to tell them. No, it's a probability Sire Knight I would have calculated for. He turned back to Hitoshi with a small smile just try to be ready and keep yourself safe. I'll do my best angel. You too. They both greeted Aizawa you know why I'm with Night Eyes group right. Both of them confirmed with Izuku giving his dad one final hug we'll get through this Izuku. I would prefer we get through this without you all here. The teacher only sighed though, ruffling the teen's hair before getting into position. Once I read off this warrant things are going to start moving. The officer said let's try to end this quickly. Izuku focused on the compound, looking and listening for anything off while the other heroes talked. Before the officer could even ring the doorbell Izuku heard heavy feet running towards them as a large figure appeared. He stretched his wings out and shot forward, moving some of the officers out of the way. Something's coming. His friends and family reacted accordingly, getting ready for a fight while the others seemed hesitant. Kid you can they were cut off as the doors suddenly flew off their hinges, a large figure with a bird mask appearing and throwing people back with a force. What's going on? The figure attacked those still unprepared, punching them back it's a little early for all these visitors. Izuku flew up and caught some before setting them on the ground with Aizawa, Hitoshi, and Tsu catching the others. Help them, whoa, they're on us already. Who cares? Let's get him pinned down. Izuku and the others checked on the people they caught before turning back to the fight, watching as the figure seemed to get more excited. You've got me all worked up. His arm grew larger as he turned to the next group of officers. Get back. Rukyu jumped in front of them to defend them against the attack. What do you people want? The hero turned into her dragon form, easily catching the fist. The Rukyu agency will deal with this. The rest of you go on ahead. You heard the lady. Good luck Yuraka and Sue. Stay safe. We got this. The rest of the groups raced forward, going into the compound and leaving Rukia's group to defeat the villain. When they made it into the front, there were a few thugs waiting around, though they were easily taken down by one of the other heroes. Most of them didn't stop moving and kept running towards their target. More and more of the gang began to appear, some of them backing down when faced with the amount of heroes and police around. Izuku took a few down but he was focused on the building. If Overhaul knew they were here it was likely he was going to let the lower members get caught while the higher ranked would buy time for Overhaul to get away. Aizawa and Night Eye voiced it to the others, getting some cry of outrage from Kirishima about loyalty. They made it to the secret door Izuku knew about. Since he had trouble explaining it to them, Night Eye allowed him to put in the sequence himself. As soon as the door slid open Izuku knew there were people on the other side and warned the group before taking a step back. But the warning Bubble Girl and Centipter were able to easily handle the three men, allowing the others to continue further in. When they came across a dead end Izuku stared at it for a moment. He knew there were things behind it, he had been here before. Lamillion, can you check the other side? Mirio nodded and phased through before coming back. It's just a thick wall. We can break it. Yellow sparks flowed around him as Kirishima hardened himself both of them punching through the wall and breaking it down. The heroes congratulated the two before one of the officers noticed the floor moving strangely. Wait, the corridor. Izuku looked around and froze at what he saw. It was like the entire basement was giving off its own heat signature. He took a step back and grabbed Hitoshi's hand. What is it? This isn't Chisaki. The officer spoke this must be the HQ director Irinaka, but his quirk didn't let him do this before. He's right, he was never this strong. Izuku said, he turned off his inferred, not wanting to see the red walls around them. He must have given himself a boost. That's what this is. The white-haired teen listened around them, mostly picking up Mirio calming Tamaki down while the heroes came up with a plan. I can make it through. Mirio shouted, running to one of the moving walls I'll see you all on the other side. A million. Izuku could only watch in shock as his brother ran through the wall. He knew Mirio was strong, but this wasn't just some low-level villain. Before he could voice his concerns though the floor opened up under them, causing most of them to fall, but it was only a one-story fall. This wasn't meant to kill us. Izuku nodded in agreement as Aizawa looked around, some of the others checking on everyone. Looky here, they all turned to the voice, dust clearing as three figures approached state-authorized goons dropping from the sky, life is just full of surprises. They want to fight. Well Tamaki cut fat gum off. You pros are essential to the mission, they're just trying to slow us down. Tamaki stood tall as he stared the three down I can take them. 
What the heck man? Hiroshima shouted let's take them together. Yeah, together. More pigs for the slaughter. That's Satsuno. Nobody pull a gun on him. I guess the secret's out whatever. It'll make it easier to go wild on y'all. That won't work here. Aizawa raced the man's quirk as himself and Hitoshi ran towards them, both of them getting their capture weapons ready. One of the men pulled out a gun but none of the heroes paused and running forward. Tamaki was able to go around Hitoshi and Aizawa, protecting himself with a shell before using tentacles to grab the three, separating them from their weapons and trapping them in his hold. I can occupy these three by myself. You all need to go. Fakum was hesitant, but he quickly got the others to go on ahead. We can knock them out while I still have my eyes on them. Aizawa knocked one down while Hitoshi went for the other. Tamaki barely looked away from the other villains. But Izuku knew he was speaking to him. Go help Mirio. I know he'll take things to far and need saving. Izuku nodded before turning and following the others out. I hope Tamaki will be okay. Hiroshima said, running next to Izuku. He's strong. He'll figure it out. Izuku looked behind them, able to make out the figure fighting he'll win. When a man says he's got it you just gotta believe him. Fatgum ordered at Kirishima. Right. He really does just go with the flow doesn't he? We haven't seen the corridor twist in a while. He's not here. Izuku spoke up with inferred active. The entire area becomes red for me, but it looks normal right now. Good, keep it up and tell us when it changes. The teen nodded, but didn't get the time to warn them as a part of the wall stretched out and pushed Aizawa. Luckily Hitoshi and Fatkum acted fast, the intern pulling Aizawa out of the way while Fatkum took the blunt of the impact. Falling through the hole that opened up, where did Red Riot go? Izuku looked around before sighing. He's with Fatgum. Then we need to keep moving. The group finally came to an opening after all of Rock Lock's work. None of them trusted it though. Now that they were so far away Izuku couldn't see the signs of the other heroes and interns. He could still see small signs of the manipulator though. Seraph. Aizawa's capture weapon wrapped around his waist and tugged him out of the way as another pillar raced towards them. Watch out. A wall came down and separated Rock Lock, Hitoshi, Aizawa, and Izuku from the others. The group looked around, waiting for something else to pop out. Izuku, if you can see him, can you attack him? Hitoshi asked, tugging on his capture weapon. Maybe. He made the blades on his wings appear before flying up and cutting through the rock he moved. He shot over to the next spot, going around the small area they had before stopping. That was a waste kid. If you can't hit him then Izuku ignored Rock Lock, digging his hands into the floor and making flames erupt through the cracks. The power was strong enough to break the wall separating them from the others, though it seemed to piss the villain off as the room began swirling like a whirlpool. Found you. Izuku flew out of the chaos and cut through more rock before aiming a flaming kick at the ceiling. The rock broke away revealing a man. Aizawa immediately set his eyes on him, causing the swirling room to still as Izuku tied the man up and knocked him out. The labyrinth is over. We need to hurry and catch up to Lemillion. Mirio faced through walls and floors until he was where he wanted. He had studied the maps Izuku had drawn up and knew what every room was and who would be in them, so when he saw Overhaul and another man he wasn't surprised. Sorry to bother you. The two looked over at him but we need to have a little chat. He felt power rise up in him at just the sight of Overhaul. All the pain he caused his siblings and friends just making him angrier. You again. Catching up shouldn't have been so easy. I took a shortcut. You look like a student trying to play hero. Overhaul tilted his head if I'm not mistaken. The last time we interacted you didn't seem to care for me. I don't, but you've hurt my family. Who? You mean Phoenix and that little girl. How do you know they aren't betraying you? Listen here Yumirio was cut off as his world tilted around him. You're not getting the picture so I'll make it clear. The men turned away from him as he stumbled more you're going to die and when the other heroes fail, Phoenix and Eri will be back under my control. Feeling drunk yet? Mirio looked up to see someone on the ceiling drinking alcohol me too. Better stay away or you'll be plastered. The man's words came out slightly slurred. But Mirio couldn't stop, not with Chisaki so close. Another man appeared with a gun and began shooting at Mirio. Even if he couldn't dodge that well he was still able to let the bullets phase through him. What kind of quirk is that? Permeation. When I use it everything phases through me. Mirio slapped a hand over his mouth, looking shocked at his own words. So that's how you got here so quickly. The man began shooting again as Mirio tried to dodge or phase through them and you're here for revenge right? Because you couldn't save your siblings the first time. That's right. Mirio grimaced at the confession. But he couldn't dwell on that now. Chisaki was going to get away if he did. He ignored the two and powered up one for all, slipping through the ground before reappearing closer and knocked the two villains into the ground, creating a crater where they landed. He sunk back into the ground and bounced around, trying to make it hard for anyone to track him. He appeared in front of them, swiping at Chisaki while he kicked the other man across the face, sending them both back. Filthy. Chisaki began rubbing where Mirio had hit him this disgusting world is full of people like you. He looked at Mirio with crazed eyes everywhere those two go promises destruction. Shut your mouth. 
The floor broke around them before turning into large spikes. Without having to worry for anyone else Mirio was able to phase right though them and use one for all to jump around. There's more to you than just permeation. The area continued to change, not giving Mirio the chance to try and hit Chisaki again. The other man got up and began firing at Mirio, forcing to dodge one more obstacle until Mirio appeared in front of the man and punched him with one for all. He appeared in front of Chisaki next, phasing through the villain's hand before punching him, sending the man flying back. You hurt my family once, Mirio paused, giving himself a moment to breathe I won't let you hurt them again. Chisaki stood up before throwing a small container. Yamoto, shoot him. Mirio recognized the case. He had heard Izuku and Tamaki describe it before, if he was hit his quirk would stop working. Vermillion. The teen turned to see the others appear with Izuku racing towards him. Don't the gun went off. Izuku's eyes widened as he saw the gun aimed at Mirio. Summoning his wings he flew in front of Mirio, letting the bullet bounce off of his scales with a loud bang. Aizawa and Hitoshi dashed forward, both of them going for overhaul while Izuku stayed with Mirio, looking his body over for a moment. How did you know your scales would stop the bullet? I didn't. Izu Mirio was cut off as night eye appeared, pulling the blonde into a hug. You did good Mirio. The white-haired teen let them have their moment, turning back to the fight just in time to see Aizawa get hit with something. Rushing over he knew it had been one of the henchmen, the hit allowing Aizawa to lose his focus and for Chisaki to use his quirk. Move. Izuku saw the exact moment Aizawa had to blink. Everything you do is hopeless. The ground erupted into spikes, separating everyone and allowing Chisaki to get away I will not allow my grand plan to be reduced to nothing by a bunch of fools. Izuku flew up and landed on one of the high spikes, using survival to spot the others, though it seemed they were all mostly unharmed here that Nomoto. I bet you're unhappy to have me die here. Izuku gasped as he saw Chisaki reach for the fallen henchman you did well and I bet you're willing to die for me right. Blue fire began to climb up his arms and legs, getting ready for the fight. A million, you were definitely stronger than me. Izuku watched as their bodies burst before clinging together and reforming but it was all for naught. The dust settled around them, allowing Izuku to get a clear look at the abomination but I will not be losing this fight, Phoenix. Chisaki's mask had fused to his face as his arms now looked black and sharp, two more arms appearing on his back. Izuku had seen Chisaki fight before, had been on the receiving end of his quirk more than once, but he had never seen the man willingly fuse with someone, let alone to such an extent. If they had never gotten involved with you Phoenix, the thing took a step forward as its head tilted to look at Mirio and Night Eye then they would be safe, Lemillion would still have his illness. Izuku paused, so the villain hadn't seen him block the bullet and they would be leaving here alive. The steps grew quicker so it's all thanks to you that they'll die. Mirio and Night Eye prepared for the attack though they couldn't move much due to the spikes still surrounding them. Using his blades, Izuku flew to them and broke apart the rock, letting them move just as Overhaul got to close. Using the flame on his arms he swung at the villain, letting the power grow and burst out, pushing the man away. Seraph, a million, find a razor. Both teens seemed hesitant at the order I will take care of him. There wasn't time to argue though. The million powered up one for all while Izuku flew to the ceiling, both of them searching the area around them. What did you do to a racer? Izuku shouted, feeling panic rise as he saw Hitoshi searching as well, but none of them could find him. You should know I have something for erasing quirks. Your hero is getting a tour of the VIP room, I'm sure you remember it. Suddenly it felt like everything went quiet. He ignored Night Eye trying to get more information while Hitoshi and Mirio regrouped, both of them trying to get Izuku's attention. Mirio, Hitoshi. Both of them paused, neither used to the coldness in Izuku's voice get out and regroup with the others, find the heroes and leave. Izuku. Now, his eyes practically glowed as fire climbed his body once again. Even his wings looked like they were made of the white fire surrounding him I will deal with Chisaki. Aizawa felt like his body was full of lead. He hadn't been able to fight back when the villain wrapped his eyes and even after he was taken away he still couldn't move. You were hit with the shorthand, you'll be like this for an hour. Aizawa remembered his kid mentioned something about this man and how his quirk worked you know I was surprised to see Phoenix still around and looking so different. His white hair makes me miss eerie. As shut up. You know he has a thing for quirks that erase other quirks. You'll be useful to him. Aizawa couldn't see him. But he could feel the villain now standing closer to him I'm sure you'll be useful once we capture Phoenix and Eri again. You'll likely be their keeper or used as a threat when we need them to cooperate. He didn't want to be used against his children. He didn't want to be the reason Izuku and Iri were trapped again, the reason Kauta would once again hate heroes and fall into a depression. Even if it was slow, he could still move. He wouldn't be another list of reasons for his children. Night I saw the spike coming before Overhaul even made it, but he didn't move. If being hit meant the children escaping then he would allow it. He waited to feel the pain, but it never came. Opening his eyes again he saw Izuku standing in front of him with the broken pieces of rock flying away from them. Seraph I told you, 
I don't take orders. He plunged his hands into the ground, the same white fire bursting and rushing towards Overhaul, giving them room to breathe Mirio cares for you. So you're not allowed to die here. The fire somehow grew brighter, coating both of them, but never burning no one is dying here. So optimistic Phoenix. Izuku shoved Night Eye out of the way as more spikes appeared, the rock trying to cage them in, but with Izuku's flight they were able to stay out of the way. I'm not leaving you here, but I will listen if you have a plan. Night Eye nodded, thinking quickly. The others have already dealt with their own villains and the other two are finding a racer head. We need to keep him busy until backup shows suddenly the ceiling caved in as a large figure dropped down and landed on Chisaki Wat. They both looked up and saw Ryukyu's group jumping down the hole that must be their villain. I, Sir Night Eye. What is it? It um. Izuku felt himself chuckle a little they landed on Chisaki and I can't hear his heartbeat. The hero stared at him for a moment. Are you sure? Yes sir. He's dead. Most likely. Because one of his subordinates feel through the ceiling. Izuku nodded as he slowly started laughing I don't know whether to laugh or cry, that was disappointing. The teen finally lost it as he started laughing historically with tears streaming down his face. Izuku, are you? Your Araka paused, staring at the laughing teen what happened? Gravity, please excuse myself and Seraph. I believe the others are down that hall and currently looking for a racer head, I suggest you join them. Oh, okay, we'll be back Izuku. While the girl was worried, she listened to the hero and took Froppy with her to search for the teacher. Our right dad's still missing. Izuku tried to stand back up but Night Eye stopped him. The other heroes will find him. We can take a moment. The winged teen hummed through his laughter. Are you injured? Do you know what he meant when he talked about Lamillion losing his quirk? I am alright. Izuku rubbed the tears out of his eyes before taking a deep breath the gun. I was able to block it so Mirio's okay. I see. Thank you then Izuku. I would do anything for my brother. So I've learned. 